Welcome back to the Open Goal FC podcast with my big friend Kevin Kyle and Cammy Bell. Boys, how we doing? All right. Very good, mate. Enjoying the sun. Ah, oh, it's amazing. Mate, this is, have we ever had sun like this? Aye, two thousand and. Uh... <laughs> I came home to the weather. 2012, because uh, I got married that year and it was roasty toasty in May. This is obviously June, but. <laughs> Can you remember sun like this, mate? No, for this long. No. And this hot. No, it's it warm down there, isn't it? Incredible, mate. That's even I've more started, stranger. I've started a wee glamping pod business as well. Aye, so try to get in, in early maybe, doors. Aye, get in, Claren <laughs> cabins. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's been flying. So it's a free pod for Slaney, because he's obviously any really busy. Time, any time, do your show from a pod. What? That'd be a good What's show. What's a pod? Like a glamping pod, like a wee cabin. Oh, I love Beautiful. that. You're you getting into in London or lying the river? Aye, you could, because uh, you, you're being really busy now, so you could do a wee uh-huh. pod. So how have you been sunbathing? Is it full, seeing the no, garden, is it full clays off? Or is no, it? no, I don't sunbathe. I just go to the golf course. You probably see a I know, t-shirt. Oh, aye. Aye. Um, just golfing. And when you get back to the house, is it? Back to the house. Uh, golf pool, place alone, or? Pool, got the pool warm, got the pool warm. Speedos. So, speedos <laughs> on. <laughs> Neighbours don't you know. You get speedos when the golf club's on. <laughs> I would love that, mate. <laughs> Send your picture later. <laughs> no, I, I want to say to the people watching, you will probably no sense this tension that I felt before the camera started rolling, but there feels a hell of a lot of tension we used to. <laughs> what happened when you played with each other? Nothing happened. Did we ever fight? No, no. no, no. Did you just go on? Aye. Yeah. I thought he was coming. was actually alright, aye. Eh? How long ago was that then? Oh, you played? 2009? Yeah. 10? Aye. I think I was. I you were the goal to start with. No, way. I was a young kid. Mark I was kind of just getting into and the. And then you come in. Did you know he had a bad knee injury or something early yes, on in your aye. chapter? Aye. Oh, was this at Kelly? Kelly, aye. aye. Kelly ah, from Marmot. Right. And then he he kind of came through the ranks with my. I remember the first, first um, time I kind of met you, you came in and we just went to Choco, El Choco, oh, pre right. season. Aye. Um, that was class, what a place that was. Amazing. Apart from <laughs> the running, the hills, Billy, man. Billy Brown used to get his running, so we kind of went up a wee bit more, like, techno, techno, technology. Advanced. Te- te- techno, <laughs> I, Technology. So we had these heart rate monitors on, and the, the physio, Alec, it shows you your heart rate, and we were, like, fucking 180, 190, pumping through the roof, like, he's like, oh, boy, boys are working really hard, and Billy Brown says, mm, I don't think they are. Don't look fucking no tight. Way. Don't look tight at me, Alec. Mate. Says they, they things kind of working, and he took us a run up this fucking mountain. I swear to God, I nearly died. <laughs> I nearly died. <laughs> it was it was literally as the Hartley Monitors came in. I remember that. Aye. And after two days, I remember him and Jim Jeffries having the conversation. Ah, they're they're not working fucking hard enough. Nobody's been sick, and that was it. Got binned after two days. You had guys spewing everywhere, and that was their that was their philosophy. It was if you've seen guys sick. being sick at the same time, you're working fit, hard enough. Fit, oh, he's fit. He's sick. Three day bend. What's the age difference between you? What age are you? A uh, thirty-seven. How are you? Five years, geez, oh. So you must have been, were you a young boy coming in I was then? young, so I just came in, I... What would I have been, 2028, she'd been 23, 22, 23? Yep. I think I'd ago. just been on loan uh, to Queen of the South, um, right. and then I'd kind of came back, and that was kind of my, kind of broke through when Kev was there, to be fair, I oh, think, right. when I kind of got a first kind of start. Who signed you? Jim? I can't, I can't it was Jim, it, wasn't it? I can't believe it took you that long to break through and with Mark Brown in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever heard a story about him? No. Can't remember it now, but it's a belter. Yeah, what about, what about, what about the premises around the day? I'm what going to go to that, Kevin. Oh, Don't right, rush okay. me when I'm, I'm just trying to find out a bit more about you. Did you just play with each other at Rangers? No. no. You, Did I leave you as came? You left and then I. Are you a Rangers fan? I am a Rangers fan. Oh, I went right. as a kid and stuff, so Good thing, um, yeah. brilliant, mate. Loved, Lived your loved dream, my man. time. Lived the dream. And what did you think when you first seen each other as players? What did you think of him as a goalkeeper? I, know, I thought Cammy was good. Did you? Aye. I thought he was quite. For a wee goalie, that would be yep. right. I feel like yep, totally. For a wee goalie, very agile and a good kicker of the ball. He's no wee new, right enough. We're all a wee bit and all we knew. And what so, about him? Would you think him as a player? No, he was very, very effective for us as well. And I think because when Kev came, well, obviously. A high kind of profile, um, being at Sunderland and that, and everyone kind of knew the name and played with Scotland and stuff, and it was a big signing for Kelly actually at the time. Right. I always remember it. And then um, when I got the opportunity to play with with Kev, um, I, he, was, he was so effective for us. Obviously, a big unit up front, scored goals, but a great defensively as well. See for coming uh, back for corners, especially me being a, a probably a smaller goalie and maybe no that back here, coming aye. out uh, for too many crosses. Cheers, Tammy, I gave that score later. <laughs> <laughs> the big man was good at the back, you know. <laughs> Magic, right? Magic. Once again, this week's Open Goal FC podcast comes to you from the offices of our official legal partner and good friends, Jones White. Kevin Kyle, take the middle part away. An award-winning multi-service law firm. They have experts in all areas 
areas of the law, including personal injury, medical negligence, conveyancing, family law, dispute resolution, estate planning and bereavement support. Ready to assist at every stage of your life. Use the link in the description below to get in touch or visit joneswhite.co.uk. I've just understood why you asked me to say that middle thing. <laughs> Some big words in there, aren't there? <laughs> just before we go, did you watch the Champions League final? Aye. Aye. Is Pep the best ever? Just quickly before we move on to your, your I career. I would mate. say he's up there, but for me, my loyalty would stay with Sir Alex. Um, I agree, Sir Alex was incredible. Pep's a phenomenal. Ah, I think Pep's phenomenal. Definitely, everyone. You think he's aye? Yeah. He's oh, yeah, yeah, he is. Like he, I always, I always worry when they get to a final Man City because they, 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 he always tinker of something, and then when he left it, Kyle Walker, I thought, oh, here yep. he goes. I didn't think that was the right decision, maybe. No, you? but it worked. They won the game, and it didn't matter how they won it. They won it. It was ugly. It wasn't a great Champions League final. You know about that. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So, can anyway. you kill him? It? Yes. No, that's what I'm always interested in. Me and you are obsessed with this, isn't it? With goalkeepers. Did you start as a goalkeeper? Um, no, I don't think I did. I kind right. of, when I was younger, I kind of I loved playing on field, actually. Like centre midfielder, tackler, um, just kind of passing the ball and that. And then I, I think I found myself going into goals a couple of times and I was decent there. And always when you find yourself decent in a position, you normally get kind of stuck in that um, area. And then I kind of started working with Anna Flake. Um, first team goalkeeper at that time was Rab McComb and he right. used to be at Kilmarnock actually weirdly um, under Jim Stewart um, got released and then ended up falling out of the game a little bit and went to Annan who were in the east of Scotland at the time right. and he took me under his wing and it was amazing from just being a kid who was short stopping normal stuff to showing me my technique at sort of 10 year old made a huge difference and that was probably a big part of probably where I managed to get to in my career So how did how did that sort of come about then you went to Kilmarnock? So I started at Annan, then went to Queen of the South and I was playing sort of what would be pro youth. What age is this, about 10, 11? Um, this was about uh, 13. 13, 13 right. I was at Queen of the South, done a few seasons there. Um, and then I think it was my first season with Command, it was under 15s. I went there and we had a decent team to be fair, we had a good bunch of boys. There was a couple of Dumfries and Galway boys had been picked up, just got scouted at the air tournament. Remember the air tournament back in the day? Who, are you so it was a big one. I got scouted Aye, It was, was a big one. Big ah, guy, nice. was like, Brazil, aye. man, you and all that. There was massive teams used to aye, go back in the, in the day. day. They used yes, to get aye, really they big used teams. To, used to have all the teams come up for London, like um, teams of Walls, uh, teams of Middles, of Walls, all the teams in Newcastle. Who's that big? Walls boys? End, wasn't it? Walls End. Yeah. Who was aye. the big players that played in that tournament? Were you? Aye, I don't know who the big players were <laughs> in that tournament, but obviously they were all like 12, 13, 14, slightly, So obviously you wouldn't have played at it. <laughs> no. <laughs> so what was I going to say there? Did you get an early injury? That you actually feared your career? Aye, so when I was I was full time at Killy, um and then I was playing a resi match, it was against Falkirk actually on a Monday night and it was absolutely pissing doing it was the pitch was soaking, it was grass pitch back then. There was a ball over the top, uh, and me and the striker slid in. I was sliding out for it. He was and to be fair, it was one of them ones that was fifty fifty. I seen why he went for it. Um, and it was just a shin on shin uh, impact. He broke his leg, Adam my cruise shit. It was like a car crash, wow, it was horrendous. Man. Um so I got an operation then, but I always remember Alec McQueen, the physio at the time, was a brilliant, brilliant physio, worked really hard with me, but I always remember him telling me years after, he didn't tell me at the time, but the doc, it was Doc McGuinness who was a Rangers doctor aye, for aye. a while, he came to Killy for a period, and he, Doc McGuinness had said to, to Alec, look, I, I don't think he'll get back from this, and he, Alec oh, never said really? that until years and years later, because obviously he didn't want to destroy me. When did I was you in see the gym. at that time though, did you think that? Uh, aye, when you get a, a massive injury as a kid, so I age think. Where were you then? I was uh, 18. 18. That's, uh, tough, that's huh? an important um, age as well, isn't it? Yeah, and it was just like, it was one of them ones where I, I felt as if I was just getting in the reserves. You were playing, the reserves league then was really strong. You're playing against really good teams, and all the Celtic and Rangers were playing all the fringe players at that point. So it was a great league to be involved in, and then obviously you get hit with that injury and. Um, yeah, it was a, it was a it was a tough time, and it took a long time to get back from even just try to get confidence in your in your knee again. First surgery of your life, so it's uh, how long were you out for a year? Aye, I was out for twelve months, um, and then actually I then came back, and I was only I was only back for four months, and I done it again. Um, I went on loan to Montrose, and obviously my rehab hadn't went well enough, and uh, I just twisted that time. And then I ended up snapping my cruciate again. Oh my God. So I had so to I, get... I didn't realise he did it twice. Because yep. obviously, like, my brother-in-law, he was at Kilmarnock. Right. The youth team the same time as Cammy. He did it twice. Straight after one another. 
I'm going to need a word with Annika. But, but see, no, but see, see now though, it's, it's such a common injury now, and, and, and right. they know. But back then, it wasn't, ah. it wasn't sort of known, was it? It was, a, it was a, it was a, it was a clear ending ah, injury. That's, back that's in the day. it. Was I? Whereas now it's like it's as straightforward. The repair it well and the rehab it well, but and I, I think now sometimes they get people back in like six, seven months. Right. Whereas it used to be a full year, maybe longer. Surgery's all different as well. Back then, I think we kind of looked at the surgery and thought mm, that maybe didn't go as well as. We thought it could have, and we ended up going to a different surgeon the second time. Um, and then again, it was like a, it was basically a full year. So that was that was a tough time. Whereas obviously, I, I kind of knew when I twisted my knee in my throws, I played on the last ten minutes, um, and I just thought I try and get on with it. It's oh, maybe aye. just a tweak in your knee. You've had this big injury recently, um, and then I as soon as I seen Alec on the Monday, I remember him. Just my knee was massive, and he was like, "Right, we need to get a scan." Found out the. Oh my god! So it was difficult, aye. But yeah, listen, that's over two years, isn't it? Yeah, aye, it was a long What's time. Two years at that, that, that time that of your career to actually then go and have the career you've had. Yeah, it's, it's a testament to yourself. You know what I mean? Because that's you know, there's, there's many players had bad injuries and just sacked it off and struggled to get back. But it's at amazing. eighteen, that's that's tough. But but again, you've got to take hats off to come out. They stuck by me. Do you know what I mean? You know, in the, the physio, and the, they paid for all the operations and stuff. Whereas, like, you hear stories nowadays that clubs aren't paying for operations, aye. which I find shocking. Um, especially when you get injured with your club, they should yeah. be looking after you. So, no, I've got to take my hat. Who was the manager then, I come out? Jim Jeffries. I see. So big Jim was there. The Jet, um, great guy. Listen, he was absolute. Him and Billy were mad. But did, um, did he know you at this point when you were going through your injury? So he. He knew of me again. Right. I trained with because you're a goalie, you normally you're get the opportunity the with, with, to train with the first team. The first team goalie wants to do his stuff with the goalie coach. Young lads get chucked in, so <laughs> you're the, horrible, isn't oh, it? man, brutal. <laughs> yeah, <that's> just, <laughs> you're letting goals in, the guys are absolutely <laughs> hammering you. Uh, so very character building. <laughs> and who was, the, who was the big sort of characters in the first team then? Um, back then, would well, you had Lockie and Alan Johnson? I so Lockie, Alan Johnson were there. Big Gordon Greer was very vocal. Um, Gordon Greer, that um, boy that went to Swindon. Oh, uh, aye, aye. Gordon, Gordon, uh, aye. Um, Gordon played with Brighton. Went, went down to Brighton, had a good career down there. Uh, obviously, Scotland and stuff. Um, Who was the goalie? The, was it Coma? So, when I first went in, it was Gordon Marshall. Was it? Uh, aye, Marshall. Holy when I was a kid, wow. was Gordon Marshall was the first team goalie at the time. Um, and then it kind of... A few Colin Meldrum stepped in for a season, really? I think, and the <laughs> Melly car. What a guy, man. <laughs> man unbelievable. What a guy. <laughs> uh, and then it kind of went and Alan Combe came in, um, and then I eventually managed to get in after all my injuries uh, and a wee loan spell at Queen's, which was amazing for me. That Do was you think that really helped you? 100%. That was the thing that actually made me realise I want to play first team football, was Queen of South Lawn. And fortunately, at that time, they had played. Um, Rangers in the final the year before so they were in oh, the European yeah, right. stuff so I managed to get a game in Europe at like 21 year old um, which was amazing against Norseland wow. over there um, and that was a kind of I always remember the bus trip into the stadium and there was all these Queen of Soul fans lighting off flares and back then it was like I'd never seen it's anything terrible. like that do you know what I mean it was, it was amazing um, first game on TV as well BBC covered that one so it was just a, a big moment where they kind of thought do you know what this is what I want every week to play men's football and develop myself um, and I had the loan the first half of the season then Jim wanted me back um, couldn't break through into the team and he gave me my debut at the end of that season actually, was that the 08, 09 season? yes it was I um, and he gave me a debut I think it was the last game of the season against Motherwell at, um, at Motherwell so he, did, when do you find out you're going to be making your debut then? does he phone you or is it in training? He literally you? in training the week before I think he just says look we're, we're going to play you that had nothing to play for so it was, a, it was quite I would say it was quite an easy one to go oh into do you know what I mean it was a, it was a end of season game not a lot riding on it um, I'd had that experience of championship football with Queen's so I was quite felt ready for it mm -hmm. um, and I kind of was out of contract that season as well and it was a big decision that Jim had said look you'll get your chance stick with Kelly and I'm glad I did because obviously the way my career kind of panned out after that I didn't jump ship I, I kind of stuck with it took until sort of I think it was almost Christmas time before I actually managed to break through. It was when Jim left and it was Jimmy Calder. So that's kinda, the following season? That's the following season. And you don't get a sniff sort of up till nah, Christmas? No, I was kind of on the bench and number two had kind of found myself as a number two. And then, um, yeah, I think because it's a young lad as a goalie. A Jim, lot of managers Jim was don't notorious for no getting the young players yep. a chance. Why do you think that was? I don't know. I think it's just an old, old, like, it's just old like school. Yep. And I think he just preferred people that he felt he could trust. 
Whereas you're putting a young boy in, you don't know what you're going to get. So I think that, like, I think back to like my brother in law again, I mentioned Jamie. I still think Jamie was good enough to play yeah. for Kamarnik at that yeah. time. But because he was young, Jim didn't have the belief to gain. I hardly think of the team we had, there was no young players in it. Like, it was Gary Hay, yep. Big David Lilly, yep. uh, Fordy. Um, they were all old guys, and you would hear a few. Liam Kelly was on the bench, um, probably yourself would have been yep. on the bench. Just, just the way Billy and Jim were. They mm-hmm. didn't like trusting in youth because they wanted experienced players. But listen, when Jimmy Calderwood came in, obviously you got your... What was your debut then under Jimmy Calderwood? Oh, I genuinely can't even remember, um, Kev. Uh, it, uh, it was early it was on. Coma was struggling with injuries, yeah, he, he? He struggled with injuries and then I got my opportunity to say, look, son, just go and play. Go and show what you can do. We know you're talented. They'd seen me in training and stuff. Um, and then to be fair I, I had a really good spell I went in and I hit the ground running and I had a, I had a good period because the club was struggling at that I point remember. obviously um, but, and it was it was great for me because I was I was a shot stopper I, I loved um, making saves and stuff and at that time come on like, we were, you were making 10, ah, 15 yeah, saves yeah. a game do you know what I mean because we were getting probably battered by ah. most teams to be honest um, so it shows you up in a good light as well so um, no it was great listen Jimmy was brilliant I, I genuinely I really liked him as a guy I thought he was a good manager um, him and Jimmy Nicol and Sandy Clark were the three that were in at the time mm-hmm. and um, they'd done a great job to keep Kelly up because we were on a, a real sticky place at that time <coughs> did you keep a clean sheet against Robbie Keane his first game yes aye so his debut it was a, obviously it was a massive thing that no, we wow. aye, 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 Robbie side. Keane aye, it was like um, it was massive when he moved to that Celtic that was the day you huge. signed me same as Celtic as well, isn't it? First day, I don't know. We were preparing for Paul Slade, mate. Slade, yeah. And his picture up in the team. And then we were like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> we went and we were Slade, and then the team sheet came through, and it was like, Robbie Keane. We're like, oh, right, we've got a chance tonight. <laughs> was and he good? Was Robbie Keane good? Aye, he was unreal. Ah, were you I, playing? Aye, I, I, I played up front. Me and Chris Maguire were aye. up front. He was in goals. And I just remember Robbie, it was his fucking, it was his movement. Movement, I oh was almost God. to see that. Incredible. I've never seen movement like it. Was it? Aye, like it, just how sharp he was. I think thankfully it was his first game because aye. see if it had right. been his third, fourth game, he would have scored them goals. Okay. He gave me an opportunity, do you know what I mean? I think it was just, he hadn't played a lot of football before that. Um, but his movement was incredible. Yeah. The amount of opportunities he made just by his movement and the way that... Going the, one way, going uh, the other way and you're like, how did, how did that just happen? Just like so clever. I think one of the best strikers I've seen in action. Yeah. No way. Aye, yeah. definitely. So, right, anyway, back to Kelly. Who was the characters in that dressing room? Jimmy Calderwood was a character, oh, wasn't he? He was, was he? mental. Jimmy Calderwood mental. was class. Wasn't he? Oh, in yeah. a different way for Just like, Aye. Like, he, he could have a conversation with Jimmy and you could take the piss out of Jimmy and then see with a team night out and that, he was fucking there right to the death oh. at nightclubs and stuff. What, with the boys? Aye. Yeah, we, we were playing, so obviously he's renowned for being a big Rangers fan. Nah. Right? Was he? And uh, we played Rangers one day, and the, the team talked about, and he just said, "Right, lads, how much to say the day? They need to win. We don't." Did <laughs> 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 he just say that? And he clapped his hands, right, and you go, "No way!" And I thought, hey, "Fucking hell!" I must have been, it? Ah, it was brilliant because I think more people, obviously Southern Rangers would have been going close that year as well. Yeah, and he just came in and went, "Ah, well, you know what? They need to. Win, they need to win the day. We don't." <laughs> He was a great guy. I, oh, I, I, yeah. Actually, at the end of that season, I went to Magloof with a few of the lads, and Jimmy had a place out there. So, and we'd say to him, "Oh, we're we're going out to Maga and that." He's like, "I'll ah, get your phone in that." She so actually phoned us, and he invited us to his, his villa. His villa was incredible. Was it? Oh, amazing! Um, oh, he was out there with Sandy Clark, and there was a few other guys. Scott Thompson, the goalie coach. Was that, up, was uh, that the time? Um, did, he didn't fall out with Coma that time, did he? Or was that later? He had a, mind he had a, mind a, a big bust up with Jamie Langfield as oh, well. Jamie Langfield, Jamie I Langfield, made the paper wasn't it? Aye, yeah. Magaluf and they got mad drunk and that, so. But I think it was slaughtering each other. Slaughtering each other and it made the papers and stuff. I think it was nearly like a reset too between aye, them. Aye, we scrap. Oh, was this, so this is the time he's invited people to Ertie's? Ah, he used aye. to. So anybody would go to Magaluf because I went to Magaluf for my stag do and invited him over. And he came off on a day with the pals and that. He was a fucking legend. Oh, what a guy. Was he? But did he have a, the, the other side in where he could aye, came, boys and all? Aye, he was a really good manager aye, he, was a really, he was a really good manager because I always think well, I remember when he came in I had that opportunity to go to Russia for a trial so I'd said to him Chad these do I went Jimmy I've been offered to go to Russia for big money can I go a week's trial I need ball so he let me go and I came back injured and I said, I can you go and I said, yeah. 
Do you know what? No, we Chrissy McGuire used to do an impression. Of. Aye, amazing. We Chrissy McGuire used to do the amazing. best impression of Jamie oh. Coleman because Chrissy McGuire's got this big long tongue. I don't think it fits in his mouth properly. No, right? definitely doesn't. Aye, <laughs> like, uh, uh, Chrissy McGuire would have been his man. Uh, Jimmy would have been his manager at Aberdeen. Yeah. So Chrissy used to take the piss out of him and stuff, and it, it, they were they were a good combination, but. We didn't play well for a period, and then we played quite well enough at the end of the, I think it was the bottom yep. six run-in, and we stayed up on the last day v Falkirk, was yep. it? Nil-nil Falkirk we drew. Falkirk yep. Whoever won that game or lost the game was going down, and it drew nil-nil. It's a great tour, that, isn't it? Oh, you and me, Maguire up front. Ah, it was. Chris, Chris Maguire was, I, I was very good surprised player. at how good he was. Yep. Ah, he's a top and then obviously he went on and did well at Sunderland and, and a few other teams in England, and it was no surprise. At Sheffield Wednesday, he did yep. well there, but... He was a good player, but he was not one. We should get him on. <laughs> but, um, was we made it? Was we made it too? Made it. What oh. the up player he was? By no, the way, he was a great wee guy. What he a player was, he was? He mate. got fined every week. He was late every day. Hi. Was he? He was. He was uh, but there, there was a few of them that were like that. All, all the kind of foreign boys that just kind of saw the day. Fernandez. Yes, I. Fernandez. Was he, was he a joke, Fernandez? Mate, oh. He was some football player. Oh. Mate, I swear to God, he was, was he? brilliant. He could chop the life out of anybody. He's, uh, he's high up at Man City in the scouting department. Who is? Dave? So he is. So he is. Like, give him a call, mate. Eh? Give him a call. Mate. Have you got his number? No. Only scout now, I'm Dean's Boy Scouts. Have you, have you got his number? That's not right. No. I've got his number. You've got his number. I've got his number. We'll give him a phone. <laughs> Best player I, I played with at Kelly was... Alexi I was going to say you must have played with Aramenko was he, like, was oh, he this mean, good hands down the best player I played with was, was Alexi Aramenko incredible footballer wow. like we had this philosophy Mixu came in pass the ball for the back I wasn't allowed to kick the ball over the halfway line he literally says if you kick the ball over the halfway you won't play that's it simple as that no matter how much pressure is on strange you strange at that time isn't it, it as was well. difficult as well because we, we didn't have the play, we didn't have players that were good enough and we all kind of knew that ourselves and probably myself included well, I wasn't good enough to do it but he wanted us to, to find this philosophy of playing out from the back but the one guy you wanted and, and um, he was called Lossa was his nickname he used to come with a guy right up his arse Marking him right on the 18 yard line because obviously we're not in the box at that time. And he would just give me the ball, Cam, give me the ball. And I would give it to him every time. Some players you would give it, would pop it straight back to you. Ah, I just find it back there, right? Yeah, striker would run at you and you'd boot it away. He would just take it every single time. Never ever give you it back. Do about 10 twist turns, play a ball over the top, Connor Salmon, boom. Connor, Connor Salmon is a millionaire off of him. <laughs> yes, Connor, yes. I, I he's say, a millionaire because he likes it. I'm joking, right? And he didn't maybe do like agree on camera or no agree. But Connor Salmon up to that point was was an all right football yep. player. That was about as best as we can describe him. And then Ericsson Eremenko came to Scottish football and got him 30 goals before Christmas and got a move to Wigan and, the, and then into the Premiership. <laughs> Darby. 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 <laughs> what sort of I knew he's playing with fucking in the Lonely League back to where it all began, right? So he's Eremenko. He <laughs> <laughs> I need Eremenko back playing but, with Broom Hill. Uh, how did he end, like, no, no disrespect to Kamala, but how did... Anyway, we end up at it was through it was, Mixu. It was finished. Aye. Aye. Russian, but finished. Aye. And it was through Mixu knew his dad. Um, his dad was a manager over in Finland. Um, and that's how he managed. Because he came on loan from, I think it was Metalist in Ukraine. And he was on like 20 grand a week. He was on big, big money at the time. Right. Um, and he came up, what, what a guy he was as well for a night out. Loved it. That's so he had nobody over here. So all the boys, like, I was living in Glasgow at the time. And every Tuesday, it'd be like Carpen back then, back in the Carpen aye, times. Aye. And he would uh, he'd be like, oh, boys, I've, I've booked a table. And because he was on that much money, we were on a great deal of money at the time. It'd just be bottles of champagne, vodka. Oh, amazing. We were <laughs> loving. <laughs> we were buzzing up on man. <laughs> what a legend. That's brilliant, isn't it? I was some player. Have you ever, ever watched a highlights reel? Really I happened? remember him, aye. He was unreal. Who did he go to after Kamalak? Did he not go back to where he... Ah, he went, he went back over to Ukraine, I think, at the time. Um, Some I, I don't know where he went, but his brother was meant to be better. His brother got tilted. I remember that sort of period of time. His brother was getting tilted from... He was, I'm sure he was at a Russian team, but he was getting tilted for a £30 million move to Man U at the time. And he was meant to be better. But honestly, Alexi was unreal. Do you think he could have played as, as high as he wanted? He, he was getting... Rangers and Celtic at that time where his name was getting punted about that he was going to go there or they were interested in him I think his problem was that he wasn't fit enough he, he wasn't right. and he never I, I, and he must be raging to this day because he, if he'd just got his head down and his lifestyle just as I say he loved a drink loved a, a carry on he would train hard but Honestly, natural football ability, unbelievable, here, incredible, man, incredible. We're well, going to go back on to the pattern line days because it is fascinating, but <clears throat> we need to go into this. Kev, is every kid's dream to play for the country? Aye. Now, 
talk to us about the call up mate how does it happen and who's the manager at the time um, so when I first got called up uh, it was Craig Levine I think um, I, I got called in a lot of squads before it um, before I actually made my debut um, I was involved in the national team for a bit and I was even just getting called up to the squad was incredible for me because I had Al McGregor Craig Gordon David Marshall were the three goalies that were normally in the squad so then for me to come up on the back of that was That's was incredible. great do you know what I mean I was having a good period at my club career um, and then Yes, Craig Levine gave me a phone call and says, look, you've been doing great. Um, I think Mars maybe pulled out at that point. He says, I want to bring you in and get involved in the squad. And I was in loads of squads, got to travel loads of places, play with, get to train and play with top players. Um, Dan Fletcher, Scott Brown was uh, there at Aye. the time. And just to experience like loads of different um, environments with these guys was was brilliant. Um, and then eventually got a, got a cap against the, the Faroe Islands up at Aberdeen. I think you were there as well, Kev. Um, so, aye, listen, uh, an absolute dream for me. Um, when do you know you're going to start? He, he spoke to be fair. He spoke to me before um, the game. We're at, we, I think we'd, we're up in Aberdeen, and he had says, "Look, I'm going to give you the opportunity." It was a friendly, um, and it was great because I'd spent so many. I'd been away so many uh, times with the squads, and obviously, I knew it was always going to struggle to get a game with these guys in front of me. There, Craig Gordon was at Sunderland at the time, flying. Um, and and what a strong goal that, oh, that, it was hasn't incredible, it? and that's why I think. Um, Angus Gunn's kind of stepped up to the plate now but I actually thought we were going to struggle because we've had it so good for so yeah. long um, and and yeah so it was it was brilliant for me and um, listen I got to see all the the Craig Levine's obviously defensive display over in Czech Republic I was involved oh, yeah, yeah. in that squad yeah and uh, see to this day I I can see why he done it so we worked on it all week we went through loads of videos um we were playing for a nil nil. We had a counter attack option for it, so it wasn't just like look, we we've put this defensive unit out and we're not going to attack. We had a spring to our, to our game. Um, I think just never saw it in the telly. <laughs> <laughs> but what happened? But we lost the trip. So we lost a goal in that game. They only lost a goal from a set piece. So if that had been a nil nil, that could have completely changed it. Probably would have made a decent result against Czech Republic, who were a strong side that time. So, it's fine so you see though he's a working it in training all week. See when he first he's on the training pitch and first causes yep. a four six zero. You know, yep. What? How are the boys? What? How's the boys reaction to that? And is anybody saying about it? No, I, nobody actually said in at the time. We worked on it religiously that week actually because I remember loads and loads of shape and Craig wasn't all for sort of shape and, and training and stuff. Um, but we worked on it really hard and he just seen it as they were a strong side at the time and the best way for us to go over there and get a result was was this formation. And I think the boys absolutely bought into it at the time. Um, I, I, they did. The, nobody was nobody was complaining. The guys that were complaining was the strikers that were left out in the in the stand. Ah, I was sitting in the stand with a couple of boys and they weren't really happy that had been left oh. out in the squad. Um, and I understand that point of view, but as I say, it's fine margins. We lost a goal from a set piece. If you didn't lose that goal, is a nil nil result decent against a good Czech Republic? Maybe side would have that mentioned point? the formation had they kept it nil nil. Uh, the but, no. and it just got because it got obviously the media got hold of it. That's what we were playing, and that's what it looked like, which it did. It kind of mental, from, mate, didn't it? After that, that? bonkers. Were you aware of that? Not aware of it, but did you kind of think of oh, this? This doesn't go well. This I it could go like this. I think you know that that you need to get a result when you're playing like that. You're you're setting your even if you just got one up front. Do you know what I mean? You, you're kind of you can still fail, and it can be okay. Whereas I think Why? if you've got that formation. And everyone can see it's that formation. You're, you're setting yourself up for a big fall if it doesn't work. Um, but as I say, fine margins. But I think it exploded as well. Where a lot of players were, some players were vocal after that and, and what? walked away from the, well, certain players obviously <laughs> walked away from the national team at but that Vocal kind of, and the press? Yes, I think they, they kind of said that, um, that they weren't wanting to kind of come back to the, the, the national teams. Poor, mate, yeah, which is poor. Again, I, I think no matter, right. you should play as long as you can for your national team. Um, so, yeah, it was it was, a, it was an interesting trip. I and think, the, I think on that, saying, you see on, the, on that, the national team, like players walking away and obviously people would say, I would love to chop my, my right arm day, that opportunity would never walk away. But see, when you actually go away with an international trip, you'd have done it as that, like when the, young kid, the, the, the younger ones and you've done it. It's a long week. Yeah. And it's a long week away for your family and stuff. Yeah. People say, aye, but the chance... But it's a long week when they guarantee that you're going to play at it. So sometimes you've actually got to weigh up, is this week away with my national team beneficial to me? Yep. I, no, I get that. And it's easier for probably me to sit here and say, but I, I, I compare that to somebody else. Like, a, a life of a football player is, is so much easier 
than oh, working I know, I... 95 every single day whereas you maybe go away maybe 10 days right no, you don't play you're frustrated that. but you come back you a couple of hours a day I get it sometimes as well. I know that's but, easy for me but to sometimes say. you get um, players that get called up all the time that one one of them are going to get a game yep. so they play or think that well, what's but, it, but I, then that I, was probably like I was in that bracket I would say I, that I was never going to play I had amazing goalies ahead of me but I also thought this is going to enhance my career I'm in the national I, squad so for me to progress my career from Kilmarnock that I'm a, I'm a seen as a national team player like, do you know what I mean? I, I maybe aye, only aye. got one no, cap, but, but you, you kind of put yourself in that bracket. So I probably selfishly thought that in my head that every time I get to go away, and, and to be fair, I loved it. To be fair, it was a, it was a good group at that time. Um, got loads of, as I say, experience. I was down at the Emirates when we played Brazil. Um, wow. We went Neymar was playing there, weren't he? Was he? So that was, I think that was one of his first kind of so games. Was, I mean, was a bit, it was big hype about went there. Massive hype um, and big, Ronaldo, the old Ronaldo, I remember he walked the, the ball onto the pitch and stuff oh, yeah. and it was, it was uh, incredible. Um, so just to experience that was was brilliant. It's oh, unbelievable, mate. But see, sorry, just to, to touch back on it. How did Levine after that sort of check game and and the players are sort of being vocal? How does then Levine deal with? It? Is he? How long did he last in after that? He didn't last too long, did no, he? No, he got and the, we used quite nice. Got the Pharaohs game, and then we won that one, didn't yep, we? Yeah, we won and that one. I think it was only a few more games after that, and that was him away. And then who came in after Levine? Was it? Burley? No, I was Burley before. No, we? uh, it would have been Strachan, wasn't Strachan. it? Strachan. Yep, yep. Because I, I got a couple of squads under Strachan as well um, at that point. What did, what, did you, him? what did you think of Levine first and foremost? Levine, I, listen, I got on with him. I thought he was okay. He was, he was, um, he was quite, quite quiet as a manager. Um, but he got his point across and worked well with his staff. But he had big characters to deal with at that point. Do you know what I mean? You had, you had a lot of Celtic Rangers players that were very high profile. So to just to, to deal with these characters must be difficult as a manager. Um, who 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 the, the days who were the sort of bigger characters like Barry Ferguson? No. So it was such a kind of Barry no there though. Um, nah, no, no. So it was like Alan McGregor. You had like Gary Caldwell, McManus, Kenny, um, Kenny Miller. Um, Scott Barry Brown, Robson. Um, right. Barry Robson was in the mm. squad. Aye. So there was there was big big characters like as I say, and you've got obviously this tension between the Celtic and which you didn't really feel. I wouldn't say you felt that much, but there was always. I remember before the Emirates um, go down to the Emirates, we went over to Spain for five days. So the first two days it was during the season. So obviously we'd we'd all had a quite hard season. So the first two days it was like right lads, he, Craig Levine had got the press on side and he says like we're going to have some downtime. So it was. Bevies and golf, and that was the first two days in preparation for this game for Brazil, which was great. Got all the boys together and that, but you could always see the the kind of separation of the Celtic boys would sit with uh -huh. each other and Rangers boys would sit with each other. Um, but there was n there was never any anybody. No, it was, that. But it was just. Uh, I always think it's like because of the because of it's not that the Celtic Rangers players don't like each other because they do. Yeah. Because it was, it was the same when I played with, with the Scotland v Wales, Kenny and Gary f f like arguing and fighting at half times. Gary's a Celtic, Kenny's with Angels yep. at the time. But they're probably best of friends out with football or s close to being best of friends. It's just that they maybe don't want the media yep. to see that they get along. Do you think though? Do you think because it, it, relays, it relays a picture of a, a fan's perception Hi. from both sides. Oh, there's you know, star you striker at, chatting to Celtic's captain Stephen today. Wittick and, did, Stephen Wick and, and Scott Brown Aye. shared the car for, for, for years and, and after old and they jump, and and but, they, but they were did they not play with Hibbs though together? Yeah, they did. Aye, Aye. But I mean, in, did you remember Gary and everyone that said when they went away with England they, they didn't like each other though? The Man Liverpool players. But do you think, think there is it, any of that? I think it's different for them because like some teams like the Man City Man you obviously I don't know I, it's a hard one I just think Celtic and Rangers I think it's most Celtic and Rangers like you see all these charity matches things like you speak to any Celtic player any Rangers fan Rangers players but it's what the fans see yeah. and because it's more from and we're in a smaller bubble than what maybe in England is we are like this wee bit in Glasgow and everybody can see it and the eyes are on you and you're like oh, why is it like for example, now why is Callum McGregor going out for a drink with I don't know who's a Scottish Rangers player? Just Jack, like Ryan, right, Jack, Ryan Jack, Jack. Why why is he doing that? It doesn't look good. Yeah, but they could be best of friends. No, no, that's just an example. I'm no, not saying that's course, what man. happens. But Scott Brown just... was a brilliant one because he was like I remember that trip. We were sitting like I was sitting with Scott, um, having a few drinks in that uh, in, in uh, Spain, and. The next game, we actually played Celtic away, so you're having a laugh with them and, and carrying on and a few bevies and that. 
and it's just incredible how he changes as a personality from Aye. when he's when he's like that, and then he goes to the game. So I remember standing in the tunnel at Celtic Park waiting to go out before the game, and I'm almost like that, almost about to give him, "How are you doing, pal?" Focus, no, just no, blank you, not even, not even look at you, and it's wow. just like that's that's obviously his the way he gets his still in the zone, and it's just uh, ah, it was incredible. Like your last week, you're sitting having a drink. I found that with Greensy because I used to speak to him quite a lot in the Scotland Twenty Ones and. Then you play against him, and he was saying, Andy, but then as soon as the game was done, hurry, big man, that was just right. good. And then you're like, fucking hell, that's how, that's what you would call the elite mentality. Yeah. I'm just there just having a fucking chat because I'm relaxing, yep. I'm, I'm like happy to be there. I'm the same, man. Whereas some of them are like, whew, tunnel vision, I speak to nobody, make it, team gets the three points, and that's the difference between. Rooney was so like that, though, wasn't he? Oh, incredible. incredible. I, that was the first time I really, really noticed it that because, of, as I say, it was so recent that I'd been sitting in a bar with him a week before, and then the next game you're playing him, and he literally wouldn't even look at you in the tunnel. <laughs> Incredible, <laughs> and I'm like ready to high five him. That <laughs> <laughs> who was who was the other sort of in in that uh, squad? Who was the sort of crazy ones that would be up to stuff and cause havoc? Oh well, you speaking of Griggsy, he's he's one that's uh, absolutely bonkers. And, I see. Oh. We've never really had a chance that anybody come on and say too much about no, Griggsy. Too much, no. Because obviously he's still playing and we're trying to give him a bit of respect, but now that he's obviously left leaners, we're hoping that we can get him on here and we can hear a few <laughs> stories. He hear about him. Hear about him because oh. uh, obviously you're like the goalkeeper's union, so you must be able to give something. Oh, and he's gave us a couple of snippets. Which no, too good. No, too <laughs> no, he's, uh, he's, he's, listen, he always. He's just mental. He's just <laughs> absolutely no, but he is bonkers. And again, that that trip obviously he enjoyed a, a few swallies around the golf course uh, during the day, and we were going to a casino at night. And um, let's just say uh, there was the toilet wasn't working on the bus, which was a forty-five minute journey. <laughs> <laughs> so Craig Levine had a little trickle coming in front of him when we were on the bus, <laughs> coming from a certain person. <laughs> but listen, if you need to go, you need to go. Um, that's their fault for not having a bus that had a Actually, toilet not working. <laughs> Just looking back like that, that. Somebody spilt the water. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> Amazing. I, I brilliant that way. Anyway. But uh, no, he's, he's and he. Do you know what? Um, he's he's a he's a real character. But what a trainer he is! I've heard that. Oh, incredible. I've never seen anyone. And Craig's a really good trainer. But Craigsy is at a different level. Like literally trains like a Trojan. Absolutely works his socks off when he's on that pitch. And that's why he's got to where he's got. But he's he's absolutely bonkers. I know. Out of the three goalkeepers you mentioned, who was the best? Um, the you are picking up, you're a manager team yeah. right now, and you've got them I've three. Got one. Pick, you've got to pick who one. Who are you saying sorry before we got here? Because he I'm knows. Picking, I'm picking. I'm picking Arm McGregor. Who are you picking? Danny Marshall. Probably, <laughs> 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 I would say McGregor. I. It's difficult to say that. Like I don't. I don't say. Nah, I McGregor. Don't, I don't say McGregor because I don't like the other two. Because. In all honesty, he Craig Gordon peak Sunderland. He was unbelievable. Was he? Yeah. Aye, he was incredible. Yeah, I think if he hadn't got that injury, he would have went again somewhere bigger for more money. And then obviously, Davy Marshall's time at Celtic, and then what he done down south with with Holland and stuff has been pretty phenomenal. But I just think Griggsy, he's been at the top of his game for a long, long time. Big God, big Craig. He's had a few injuries, but Griggsy's been there right at the top. And for as mad as what he is, they've maintained being there. That's a yeah. fair achievement. I, I no Alan McGregor for me, and and I, they're all phenomenal goalkeepers. But Alan, I think, just makes saves that are unexplainable. Right. Um, for me, that when I look at them, even as a goalkeeper, I'm like, wow, how's he actually managed to save that? Right. Um, certain ones in the European campaign that got them um, to the final recently, um, and their their match winning saves. And I know the other two can make them as well. And I've seen Craig Gordon, as you said, was brilliant at Sunderland recently, been phenomenal until he got his injury, and hopefully he comes back. But no, I just, I just think you're right, Kev. That the longevity, the top of his game, is incredible. What's the angriest you've ever seen him? Oh, very angry, very yeah. angry. <laughs> he's, he's. I actually done commentary at Queen of South game, and it was when he had got dropped um, recently. I get. Um, it was in the cup, and he'd got dropped for John McLaughlin. So he was playing in the sort of, I would say it was a B team almost that was playing in that cup game. Uh, um, and he was going bonkers the whole game, like so frustrated. You could see him because it was a young lad in front of him as well. And he was just so unhappy that the way the game was going. They were winning, but he, he demands so much, which is great. And I, I think Rangers are probably going to struggle. They've not got a guy in the building mm. at the moment who 
demands that much, uh, and that's why I would have liked him seeing him stay in stay some in. sort of role. Definitely, um, just for to let people know that demands are there for the club. Look, okay, Kev, two cruciates, and then made his debut for Scotland. That is incredible, isn't uh, it's, it? For any young player out there, like stuff because <coughs> I think he's saying something that he didn't even think he would ever get to a first team, but to go on and make your debut for, uh, debut for Scotland and all be against the Faroe Islands up in Aberdeen. Playing for your country is playing for your country. You'd have made yeah. much more, clearly, with the goalies there. Ah, you'd have made much more. It's the same as the old days when you had guys that couldn't get a cap for Scotland because we had strikers that were incredible right. at the kind of the bleaches yeah. and some of the midfielders we had back in the day, as soon as in that way, you couldn't get in. Who kept you out? Uh, who kept me out? Kept, well, I kept Kenny out for a while. <laughs> and then I got a bad injury. And then have you I, told him that? I've told him many a time. <laughs> I tell you, I've told Kenny this. That night, Scotland B played Germany B. If I hadn't been on my point that night, he wouldn't have stuck out because I was fucking deadly that night. And ah, set him up him and uh, then I got injured and he got a wee chance. I said, I gave him a chance now, I'm going to have a wee break. <laughs> right, Cammy Boy, back to Kamala, Pat Alliance and manager. Now that you've been involved with Scotland Major Dave, is he now saying you're not going anywhere until there's a proper bid in for you? Um, it was actually, it was. It was difficult because under Mixu, I liked Mixu, was a good manager and I had this philosophy and listen, he, he made us all believe that we could play that way. We worked really hard in it in training as well and it did, listen, I think it actually started to pay off. I remember we beat Hearts at Tynecastle 3-0 and that's the first moment when, because we were struggling in the league at that point and that was the first moment I thought, you know, it's clicked. Eremenko scored a world day that day. I never um, knew he played like that, Pat Lane. Ah, he, he, no, totally. Did, were, no, you good with your, were you comfortable with your feet? I was okay with my feet. I quite, I quite liked the idea of doing it, but it was early on and like, everyone's playing like it now, but I this was no day. Heard they, back then, right? say, like, nothing, it was all get the players up and, and, and play along. Um, so, <laughs> I, he kind of, I was out of contract. He actually dropped me because I wasn't going to sign a new contract. Um, and he said it wasn't that, but it was clearly that. that. Um, and uh, we eventually came to an agreement and I, and I signed a, an extension to my deal and um, then obviously he left and got the Finland job and Kenny Shields came in um, and then the, the following season that's when we won the League Cup See, just before then, did yep. you um, have any offers to go? Yeah, so I had a few offers to go um, I had a couple actually offers um, abroad which was bizarre I got offered to go to Azerbaijan um, Tony Adams was a manager over there. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> that club, that was that team, man. That was that team he was at. Aye. Well, that was in Spain, he done that time. No, no, that was in Spain, but oh, aye. Aye. Um, Did he speak to you on the phone? Aye, so I spoke to him on the phone. On the phone. He, he was fine. He, he sold it really well. He said, There's sheep crossing the road when you've got a training. <laughs> so, uh, no, listen, it, it was uh, it was a kind of big one. I had a conversation with my message and she wasn't happy about it. She wasn't the one. <laughs> um, and yeah so I decided look I'm going to stay I wanted to play more SPL games I think it was better for my Good career for you, mate, um, so and then obviously Mixon moved on and, and Kenny came in but amazing as you said what a decision you made to stay because you then League Cup final against yep. Celtic just talk to us about the build up of that how's everything gone training the, the feel about the place um, ah, listen, the, the week up to it was actually quite difficult because Piscali got uh, a bad injury a couple of weeks. Well, it was, I think it was about 10 days before it. He was obviously a club captain, um, was a big player in our team as well um, and got a bad injury. Uh, so we're all absolutely gutted for him because mu how much he gave to the club um, and to miss that opportunity was devastating. So it took us a few days to get over that. But then Manu being Manu was very big character and bubbly and got his still going again and um, got us going and Kenny just kept everything quite simple and straight he was very vocal in the press that week I always remember which he was always vocal in the press <laughs> he always just liked uh, stirring things up and was just piling the pressure on Celtic no pressure on my players and he, he was oh, saying all the right things and he was giving he was he was, he was making the Lennon bite a few times I think there was a few oh, comments in there and, and Lenny was biting back so he had that that wee bit about him Kenny but it was pretty normal um, we stayed the night before it in the hotel and Kenny actually with the evening meal and then after the evening meal he says, look lads, you just want to have a beer, have a this is before a League Cup fight. <laughs> Our boys are getting tagged up. No, nobody took it, nobody took him up. But he says, look. The first it, time you never took him up. I was in my room doing it. <laughs> uh, no, um, it, 
and he just I think he made the offer just to make everyone feel comfortable because we were obviously very nervous none of us had played in this big stage before um, real underdogs a brilliant brilliant Celtic team at that time um, we had some good characters and good players but we were, we we're nowhere near the team that Celtic were um, did you believe you could win like genuine though uh, no, I think we, you always go into a game. I certainly always would go into a game thinking you've got a chance of winning. You need to play uh, the, best the best of your, your ability to, and on the whole team did need to to do that. Um, but we played Celtic that season, obviously a number of times, um, and the season before we'd actually beat them as well. I think we beat them at, under Mixu. We beat Celtic for the first time in fifty six years at Celtic wow. Park. So there was that kind of, there were still players there, obviously I was there at that time, there was a number of players that had still been there, so we had that belief that we could beat them, especially beating them at Celtic Park was a massive, right. massive thing for us, so, um, aye, but we knew it needed a huge performance. How did the game go? It was, it, listen, I had a brilliant game, I, I got man in a match in the game. Good for you, mate. Um, but, and it was a game of my life, to be perfectly honest, perfect time to have it in a cup final, high profile if you could pick a time that's when you want to have it and thankfully I did but the other players as well were incredible honestly we gave as much we had as many opportunities I had a number of probably I had probably my best save in my career in that game to be honest um, Anthony Stokes header and it was down low to my left and I, it was a Pretty reaction bad, save yeah. and I just managed to just kind of squirm it around the post um, but we had, we had a number of opportunities as well um, so I, I feel as if we'd done enough it wasn't just like they absolutely battered us and we hit them with one opportunity we had the opportunities in the game and um, no, it, was, it was an incredible experience Is that the best feeling you've had as, as a player? Aye, no, listen it was see the last five minutes Willie Call made a decision as well was, uh, Stokes went down for a penalty literally in the last minute and I thought oh, he's going to give this here Aye. and he never rebooked Stokes for diving um, so it was a mad. That was a little rescue. Yeah. Aye, we were a rescue. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, it was um, nerve wracking the kind of last five minutes because you knew they were going to throw everything at, um, and you you would draw the luck quite a lot in the game as well. But it was see when the final whistle went, it was just best ever. Oh, incredible feeling. Was all your family in the crowd, and how was it? How was the celebrations after? Did you just go back to Kelly? No. So obviously this was the game that. Um, one of our players named Kelly that you mentioned before his oh, dad, right. died, his dad in the stand. died in the stand so, oh, um, so it went from being an unbelievable experience and, and literally I remember being on the pitch um, we're all cuddling each other celebrating went over our fans kind of cuddling and Peter Logan the um, kit man had said um, whispered in my ear oh Liam's dad's took Noel and I thought like, I didn't even register that he was oh, at the yeah. game at the time and he went oh he's over there and you could see paramedics obviously working on his dad and I was like, wow. I says, where is he? And he says, down the tunnel. So I left everyone. I went down the tunnel and Kirsten Callahan, the secretary at the time, she was with Liam and Liam was obviously distraught. He was punching walls and really frustrated at what happened. He was devastated. Um, so I just grabbed him and gave him a cuddle and um, obviously he went to the hospital with his dad. So it went from being the best day of every single player's life to, I always remember this, was sitting in the changing room. Come on, never ever won the League Cup in their history to the League Cup sitting in the middle of Hamden changing room every single player almost crying um, and Kenny no speaking wow. in tears and it was just went from just that high emotion to the, such a low within minutes um, and obviously we kind of dusted ourselves down um, Kenny spoke and says look we're going to get ourselves out here because obviously it happened there so we, I think it was a bit raw because it had actually happened in the stadium um, got on the bus and he, Kenny done a speech and just says, look, Liam wouldn't want us, he would want us to celebrate, we need to be respectful obviously of his father mm -hmm. and keep his father in our thoughts, but we still need to celebrate this yeah. for our fans as well. So we kind of grabbed a few beers and then started to go into Kilmarnock on the bus and we'd done an open tour bus and uh, it was, the open tour bus was amazing. Was like, that the next day? No, same same day, so literally we, had, oh, we, we jumped on the bus and then jumped on it outside of Kilmarnock, there, there was an open um, top bus for, waiting for us, so we jumped on it and then started to go through the streets to come out down to the main street, John Finney Street. Um, and as soon as we got to John Finney Street, I'd never seen anything like I didn't know come out had that many fans. <laughs> <laughs> um, played there for years, and, and all these people, it was rammed. They literally, the bus couldn't get up. It was one of you know the scenes when you see it, you see it. Obviously, we've seen it recently. End that of the season. Amazing, that amazing. Did I have one? Brilliant, brilliant, and incredible. And I was well tanked up by there. I nearly fell off the top of the bus. I've been tanked. Wasn't it too much for you to get uh, tanked up? Uh, you right. <laughs> That's a few times. Is he a big drinker? No, he's no, he's hopeless. Is he? <laughs> he, he is hopeless. Sleep, isn't it's Aye, for a sleep I would love, mate, they two buses I'd love to do. I did one for Sunderland. 
Remember, that was amazing. I think we had maybe half a million people on the streets. Maybe more. Class. I might do uh, one on the wee hop on hop half the tourist bus. <laughs> you, know, no, no, <laughs> like you, were, you, were, you were on an open top bus at SWDC. Ah, that was amazing, actually. <laughs> Aye. Just That's not amazing. Right. That it was, final, it was brilliant. Just um, um, on Kenny Shields, if you, I remember when I was I went to Morton for a for a week to train. Um, and he was, I really liked him, but I remember he was explaining, it was, it was like in between possession, right? It was in between, so we'd stopped for a minute and he's walking and explaining it. And Gary O'Connor just clipped his heels. <laughs> and I think to myself, <laughs> what the fuck's going on here? Was he, was he mental bucking the shoes? Because if you think if somebody done that, you'd go nuts. Uh, he was, he was just, uh, he was a, I loved him as a manager. I, I really did. I thought he was, he was a brilliant manager. I, I didn't think Kamarnock should have got rid of him when they did. I felt as if they, Pressed the button too quickly. Um, we finished seven for something in the league, and it wasn't good enough. It was because we won the cup. Expectations grow. Um, ah, he was he was bonkers. He loved getting himself involved with the press. He got himself, and that's probably why he got himself sacked. To be honest, because the right. club what he was getting so he was getting involved. With he has situations. been known for saying things in the press. Yes, and, and he, even he recently, yes, that have got him into trouble. He just not talking. He doesn't need to get involved uh-huh. in either. But I always remember he kind of he's early on this Northern Irish guy turns up. Mix you brought him in as. Um, his assistant and he would just had his knee, oper- a knee operation done so it's pre-season and we're, we're, he's on crutches so he's standing outside of the pitch and he's like the passing drill's not going the way it should be going and he's set the passing drill up um, so he's like oh, oh, oh stop 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 so he's on the crutches right he's kicking the ball with one leg this is how it should be done kicking the ball with one leg ahead of himself <laughs> crutching his still away kicking it again and saying right should be passed in here and passed in there and like running about the pitch with the crutches and you're like wow who is this guy um, and we soon found out it was uh, our own man Kenny Shields oh brilliant, brilliant. But, so the move to Rangers how does it come about is um, that after the season you win the League Cup? Uh, Brilliant. Yes. So is it? Ah, yes, <laughs> it is. It, it was the season after, and I was uh, that was my last season, uh, last year in my contract. Ah, right. So I kind of got to um, Christmas time, and I'd heard whispers. I, I was having a good season at, at, at that point, um, and I'd heard whispers that Rangers were interested. My agent was obviously looking to see what options I had. Kelly were trying to tie me down like a five-year deal. But I wanted to go into January to see what, what was out there for me. Um, and it was the first year, actually, the winter break came in. So I was over in uh, Egypt with my missus. And my, my agent phoned me. He's like, right, I'm going to meet um, Charles Green. And I was like, right, OK. And he says, uh, so, as you can imagine, <laughs> Charles Green's on the scene. <laughs> um, so he, 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 he phoned me. He says, I'm meeting him tomorrow. So I'll phone you tomorrow. I said, perfect, that's fine. Um, so he went in and he came out and he says, "Look, we've been offered a, a four-year deal. That's the that's the that's the contract. Wow. He wants you to sign it within the next two weeks. He says you've got two weeks to decide. Um, there's no flexibility on the offer. That's it as as it was. So I said, "Look, is there anything else out there?" And Burnley were interested at the time as well. So they were um, they were kind of. They didn't put a contract in front of me, but they were saying, look, we're interested, we're, we really liked them, we've had them watched, blah, blah, blah. Um, and my agent says, well, you need to put a contract, come, hey, Rangers have put this contract in front of him, and we, he needs to, he's got two weeks to sign. Um, so Burnley then said, I oh, want him to go down. But by this time, I'd almost made my mind up, I wanted to go to Rangers. I'd sat about and thought about it on holiday, and I thought, you know, I, this is a chance for me to, to go to a club that I supported Sport, as a aye. kid. Um, a massive, massive football club. I knew playing against them, how big they are, and the fans, and what they can do. Even though they dropped down the leagues, you could still see they've been tra- the travelling support was phenomenal. Aye. The home support was the club was a bit of a mess. I, I get, I get that, and I was a wee bit nervous about that. Um, yeah. That the people at the top was was wasn't right. Um, so yeah, so I just kind of said to my agent, "Look, we're going to go for it," and it was one of them ones that. Agent says, right, we're we're meeting on a Tuesday night at six o'clock and meeting the you know the Asda car park near it. <laughs> so I met him there, and then he's like, right, we'll drive to the front door, go in and say because I was still with Kelly at this time, and and I didn't really want um, Kamarnock really find finding out, or the or the, certainly the fans because it would have been difficult for me between then no um, then and aye, the end aye, of the aye, season. Aye, aye. I'm just fighting the headline with this because it probably be a sign for Rangers and Asda car park. <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> so who did you meet when you went in there? So when Maybe I went in there, I met Charles Green. Um, what was he like? Toilet, no, it was in it's the, the boardroom. How, what was he like? Um, 
Aye, he didn't know he didn't know where Kilmarnock was. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a that was a kind of red flag that I had a conversation with my agent at the time. I say he didn't know um, where Kilmarnock was at the time. So, but anyways, um, I'd spoke to Coyster this time as well, so I knew that he had want he wanted me at the club. So that was the biggest thing for me that the manager wanted me. Ah, um, yeah, it is. When I went in there, Charles Green, yep, yeah, absolutely. Um, I could tell straight away wasn't the guy that should have been involved in that club. I could you tell that yeah, right away? Yeah. Aye. Definitely. I mean, if you don't, uh, if you, you're involved in a business and you don't know, I'm a product to him. You don't know where that product's coming from. Like, that's wrong. That's embarrassing. That's embarrassing. That, that, that shouldn't happen. And, and again, he openly said it in front of me and I was like, whoa, what's what's this all about? Like, what I don't know what Kermanic is. Um, so, wow, man. Um, yeah, so that was the, uh, I got the deal signed and then actually the next day I went back and I, I told Kenny, I went and I, I told him I, I wanted to be honest with Kenny, I wanted to be honest with the manager and say, look, I've signed for, for Rangers, I'm going there next season. He was like, look, delighted for you, you need, to do, what you need to do what you need to do, it's, um, it's a move for your family, you and your career and um, he was fine, he says, look, I want to protect you from here on in, um, I want to play, you're my best goalie, um, I want the best for the club, some of the fans probably wouldn't be happy if they know, so we'll try and just keep it quiet. Two days later, it's back page. This, the that? Sun, uh, Cammy Bell signs pre contract oh, Rangers. We did so. saw you in the hashtag car park. <laughs> <laughs> so, How did the Kelly fans take that? So, obviously, everyone was then asking you, Have you signed for Rangers? And you, you, you don't want to lie, but you also don't want to come out and say, Aye, I have. Um, so, you try and bat it away in, a, in the best way that you can. And Kenny, being Kenny, obviously gets asked in a press conference. So Kenny, always thinking on his feet as he normally does during the press, <laughs> comes up with, no, 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 it's not just Rangers that are interested, Ipswich are uh, interested. In so I read this the next day in the paper, Ipswich are interested in Cammy Bell, he's not signed for Rangers. Um, two days later, uh, Mick McCarthy was Ipswich manager at the time, <laughs> Ipswich Press asked him, had never heard of me. <laughs> So I'm like, Kenny, man, could have picked a club that's the manager actually knows who I am. <laughs> so oh, yeah. oh, I was like, oh my God. So then that just added um, fuel to the fire. Oh, and, man. Um, eventually, I think everyone kind of knew that I'd, I'd, I'd agreed with them um, and I was going to go there. What was your first impressions of McCoyst? Um Yeah, listen, he, he's, a, he's a very likeable guy and um, what he'd obviously, a, a club legend he is, so, and what he'd the best for the club. So you knew that was there. Um, I think he was also knew that the boardroom wasn't right, but he had to battle that. It wasn't the players? Um, so, but he just he spoke how big the club was, which I knew. But you don't you don't know until you actually go there, Kev. You yeah. think you know until you're actually there, and then you realise, wow, this is bigger than you could uh, imagine. Yeah. It's hard to explain to people this day, like to this day and age. If, even if you're a Rangers fan, I think until you're actually in the door as a player or as a staff member, you don't really know. Yeah. The, the expectation, the, the pressures, everything that comes with the club, it's, it's even massive. though even though it was done at League One, right? Was that still there? And and sometimes I think the the pressure and frustrations at that time of the club were were bigger than right, than they had ever been. There was a lot, as I say, there was a lot, of, every a lot of unrest at boardroom level, um, which the fans were, weren't happy with. We're in League One, fans aren't happy at that. The they expect you to beat every team six 0 it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, you need to go to St. Rand on a Wednesday night. I remember doing that. And it's, uh -huh. it's pissing, doing pitches soaking, boggy. You just need to win there. That's that's all you need to do. And I, it was, it was, um, it's difficult. It was difficult. Was it a, <coughs> seriously, it was a, like, a, 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 it was a strange time and stuff. Like people are, but was there a big difference in sort of the feeling about the place compared to your dressing room at look? Yeah, I think, um, Looking at obviously with different nationalities at Kilmarnock, and then you had different nationalities at Rangers. It was just a bigger, bigger squad, bigger changing room. Um, even at that point, there was more staff. A lot of everything was laid on for you. Aye. At Kilmarnock, you're, you're scrapping and scraping for yeah. everything at that point. We had Michael Johnson as a chairman who was didn't want to spend a penny. Oh. So, <laughs> um, so it was it was it was different, um, and you had a lot of media wanting interviews and. And being involved with you, so it was it was uh, it was completely different from what I was used to. Anyways, did you initially play as a trialist? Because the, I mean, it was a transfer embargo at Rangers. Uh, so the transfer embargo was in place, so I'd signed this pre-contract, and that's when you know you start to get nervous because you're like, 
those rumours of club were going to go bust again, um, purely because of the the guys that were at the top of the club. Um, so all these rumours are flying about, and I'm I've not been paid. So I've not been paid until September. I don't wasn't to get paid until September because they they couldn't pay me because obviously that's when they were registering me when their transfer embargo stopped. So. I played as a as a trialist one game, but you're only allowed to play so many. They signed like eight boys that summer. You're only allowed to play so many trialists. So obviously they're in League One. They're expecting to win most games. So Coisty was like to me, "Look, I'm going to play Scott Gallagher because I want to play my forward thinking players for the West." Yeah, I was like, "Look, I totally understand." It was frustrating for me. Got the pre-season games, and then obviously you had sort of a, a few week period that you couldn't you couldn't play. Um, it's actually wild when you think about it. Isn't it? Mental. I mean, I, should we look back? It is mad. I remember when Blackie, when Blackie signed, Blackie phoned me to say, "Yeah, it's me. I've got, I've got my deal sorted." And he phoned me like a, a week, three weeks later. I had to took it off the table, Kevin. I've not heard anything from them. And you're like, but "I thought you said you'd agreed." He says, "I've got the contract in front of me." He says, and, and then an hour, four weeks passed, and then he came back and signed again. It was just like all over the shop. See, when when the, all them rumours were at the the administration again, or, or the club going bust, I'm like, "Wow, I've I've not been paid since." My last wage was June, and obviously you're not earning a huge amount of money at Kilmarnock, so you're using your savings aye, aye. to to live off, and you've got from June to September to to keep going. Um, and it was I, it was. I just I just look back and think, right, Rangers were that desperate they allowed a man to cut the men to come into the club, and nearly fucking ruined them forever. Yep, totally. And I just to this day I think how how was that ever allowed to happen? Like Craig White was bad enough. But Charles Green was a fucking disaster. Yep. And then, like, I, I, like you're saying about McCoy, so I remember, like, McCoy saying to us about it, like, fuck, I'm taking camp. <laughs> <laughs> he was saying to us about, like, he says, just didn't worry about the off the field stuff. Yeah. Concentrate on what we have to do and everyone will be fine. And he used to sit there and think, are we going to get paid on time? Are we going to get these contracts that we were, we were given? And, like you say, it's just, I don't, I don't know what it just had an absolute disaster a club that size mental My, I, I, in that period that I was at Rangers as well we got asked to take a pay cut um, so, and, and this was so after Charles Green had left I think it was probably that season that first season that I joined it was, but it was further on with chief executives kept on changing as well so you're thinking right, what's going on here Like, why is everything changing so quickly um, and I think it was maybe Graham Wallace that, was, that came in as chief executive at the time and he had a conversation with Lee McCulloch and says, look, we, we, we need to cut back. And, 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 and Jig came into the changing room and says, look, lads, the club have asked us, would we consider taking pay cuts? And so all the players kind of got together and gathered their thoughts and were like, well, look, they need to answer a few questions for us. Absolutely. Like, certainly I was, I was like, if the club need us to take a pay cut, then certainly will. I, I certainly would have um, for the club. But why? What we're we doing it for? Are we got the threat mm-hmm. of administration? Yeah. What, what's what's the reason we're doing this? We need a bit of explanation about it. And um, it, there was no explanation. It was more, more it, no, we're not going to go into administration. I was like, well, why are you asking the players to take a pay cut if we're not going to go into administration? Oh, it was just nailed. everything was very so very what, bizarre. Was ever explained to you? No, why? never explained. So we all basically said, look, if we're going to go into administration or we're financially struggling, struggling as a club, all of us kind of got the gun and said, absolutely, we'll, we'll support the club and we'll take a pay cut if that's what's needed. But if we're not, then why? Well, of course, you need to explain, explain that. To this day, so it was, it was very bizarre that we even got asked that question. Asked that, and yeah. explanation. I still think to this day, the way they operated through that third division to get back to the Premier League, the way they did it, that's what's cost Rangers being so far away from Celtic for such a long time. Mm-hmm. Because they could easily have bought the best third division players mm-hmm. to get the third division, then got the best second division players to get the second division and so forth. But when you're going into the third division and getting guys three, four hundred grand a year, and loads of boys getting that type of money through the divisions, and who, who was doing that? Who was making these? Who was making Charles these decisions? Green. Guy. Charles so you've Green. got the guys, and that, that's where it's that's just like experience. Was you know what Sheffield United, or was he from Sheffield? I think he was from Sheffield. Oh, I don't basically, know. a guy coming in. And still try to operate Rangers in a way that they were in the Premier League when they were in the third division. So players coming in and saying, I want the same money as what I was getting. It. I, want, I want double my wages what I was getting there. All right, OK, we'll give you that then and you go. Because I thought they were desperate the, players. There was no, of, no strategy nah, about the club. There was no strategy. There was there was strategy. No strategy. And if they, if they had a strategy, they could have got through them leagues um, much financially, better. financially better off. Right. Yeah, they could have absolutely could have. Because they had the share issues and stuff where they raised 20 million quid for whatever and all these things. Well, if you had managed to get through, so say you're saying 400 grand a year. <clears throat> I know that at 400 grand a year for one player, 
four hundred grand a year. Then now, with a good manager, would get you the third division. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You think That's a huge four, budget. Aye, four, so most budgets in the first, third, second division now are two fifty to three hundred grand. To get, no, even as much as that. No, nope. we're paying four hundred grand for one player. Well, so, I was at I was at Annan as director of football, so I know that the rough, their their budget was under two hundred k for a season. Aye, so that that's the the whole. Team Rangers budget. are paying that for one player. I think they missed a I, I always thought at the time, I always thought that Celtic and Rangers through the youth have got the, they get the chance Aye. to get the best players. I know. All three the nine year yep. old all the way up, they get the chance to get the best players. I think at that stage they should have really focused on the, the youth. And I'm not saying every young player is going to be good enough, but you could have built by the time they go back up there, they'd have had. Ah, you had, had, had well. like Jig, um, Lee Wallace, yep. um, I can't remember who else, it was there from the old uh, term, but they were staying. You could have put your Carl Smiths, your Kyle Huttons, your Andy Mitchells, your Chris Hegarty's, all the types of guys in, and then bring in the likes of, no saying me, but people of my age and, and the one are going to cost a fortune. And maybe give them like, like we're going to give you a, a, a grand a week, yep. and that's all you're getting. I might have said no, but somebody else might have said aye and said, work with the young players and we'll just go up this league. Then we'll do this the next league. Then we'll do this the next league. We get to the Premier League. We've done our share issue. We've now got 20, 30, 40 million quid to go and have a go at it. And they could have closed the gap quicker. And instead of this fighting the finances all the time, and it's only probably now this season, this pre-season we're in now, where Rangers probably look like they have a few quid to actually go and spend to try and make it the gap a wee bit closer. And it's yeah, like, I, it's, I feel sorry for the Rangers fans. And I, listen, there's loads of, I, I drive my wee taxi and people say to me, there's only my big man, you're on 600 grand a year at Rangers. I was like, no, I was one of the worst played at Rangers at that time. Because I was just happy to be there. I was grateful for the opportunity, regardless of how I tell a story or whatever. I just think that some people have profiteered out of Rangers massively through those years. Yep. And it's so sad. be somebody there though, making sure that, that this wasn't oh, happening. So when you're phoning a player that's maybe... I don't know you're offering this. Somebody should be saying there's no way they're but they, they did because you would have had what would you have had the David Murray regime that would have probably all been dispersed and then you've got a whole new guy the Craig White. I mean even think about how he got uh, uh, acquired the club, boarded alone on the back of future pre future season ticket sales. Would that mm. be right? Yeah. Well, we are hoping to raise t- fifteen million wow. quid, whatever, whatever it is, five million quid for ticket sales. Can I borrow that? So borrowing money in advance, it's it's, it's never going to win. Did they ever but, speak to the players? The board? Aye. Nah. We, we, again, when the chief executives kind of changed over, we, um, I think it was a guy, Paul Mavers came in, um, and then there was another, as I say, Graham Wallace came in at one point. It just kept on chopping and changing, and obviously the, the Eve Steels got invo- involved in the in the club as well, um, Sandy and James. And I spoke to Sandy and James because I, I, a couple of times I was early um, at the games and I was injured. Um, and they were they were they were fine at, again when to speak to, but you don't know what's going on at boardroom level. There was there was so mm-hmm. much going on. It was just so much change. When you see so much change, you know it's not right. The one thing that was incredible was the support. Oh, I just didn't stop there. Listen, I, I could you believe could you believe that? Listen, I used to look forward to my short spell at Rangers, and regardless of my allegiances to whatever club I support, see the fact that we turned up at Irox in the third division, you had forty five fifty thousand people. It was incredible. Like I, I, I had friends from Stranraer that we caught with me every week. My brother's a Rangers fan. My, my um, a lot of friends come up and I used to get them tickets because tickets were scarce yep. in terms of like the away games to Annan and stuff like that. Peter Head and I used to just think, man, like what other? There's only a certain amount of clubs in the world that do what the Rangers fans do. Like Celtic fans, I would imagine would do the same. Sunderland fans, there's big clubs that would do that, but. It, it was an unbelievable experience to play in the third division. And even for the third division players, I think of some of the teams we played against at like Queen's Park, Peterhead, for them to experience that yeah. must have been unreal. That's memories for them that they'll tell their kids. Like mm-hmm. I always tell my kids when we drive by our brooks, they played in there, Phil Hoos scored a goal in there. What an unbelievable late. And they're like, oh, really? Wow, that'd be class. And it was class. It was like a huge institution. And it's just like, I'm glad they're now, I think, functioning better. Yeah. And it's competitive again, mm-hmm. um, but ultimately it was dark years and obviously me and Cam experienced a little bit of it from a playing side, but the fans experienced a hell of a lot worse than what we did. I mean, we were still getting paid to play for the club, mm-hmm. whereas these fans were putting everything, money and their time and effort and support to try and just keep the club going. And, mad, um, isn't it, to think? Yeah, it's mad, it's mad, but these, these things sometimes happen in life and 
you hate to make mistakes to try and get back and Rangers made a lot of mistakes yeah. and then hopefully fingers crossed lessons will be learned and that never happens again because as much as we love the rivalry and stuff in Scottish football we need both teams to be functioning at the oh, maximum of course, to make I. it as successful as what it is right on to my cheerier things guys <laughs> fucking hell but it's that great it's that great, great in there <laughs> characters in that dressing room Cal Nesman I mean he's been an absolute star on this show flying down in the championship I mean I can't believe his decision though to leave Luton 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 up Yep. <laughs> he must be absolutely sad. I bet he's begging Luton to take him back. What was he like as a boy? I was only there with Cal uh, for, for a, a short period of time because he left. Um, I, you would have been there with him the season before, but he only he was only pre season. I think he left after pre season, but ah, he was bonkers. Great, great guy as well, though. Really uh, good guy. I enjoyed him in the changing room. Who was other man? Moshney, he was there, wasn't he? Oh, Moshney, man. See, Anutter. No, see, to be fair, obviously, we'll, we'll touch on the Motherwell game soon, but. Yeah. Um, he was he was absolutely the nicest guy you could meet. Uh, so very religious, um, really quite quiet. Uh, but yeah, if you got on the wrong side of him, he, he had this this switch that just went. And, and we'd heard this as well. Again, we'd heard that he when he was at I think it was South End that he'd got red carded during the game, and um, he'd went down to the the opposite changing room wanting the the boy that he'd had the instant with. Oh, in the car park. So you we knew he had that, it in him, like. But um, yeah, he was, I love he was, that shit. He was oh, man, oh, I love that but shit. he was uh, he was he was a very good good guy to be fair. Quite quite quiet and quite respectful. To everyone. Who was a mad Who was a madman in that team? I don't know if Rangers. When I, my time at Rangers. Black, what was he like? Blackie was quiet. Blackie was a he was a follower. He would Aye. just follow the crowd, Blackie, wouldn't he? He's Aye, the wee guy that thinks he's six foot five, but he's two foot three. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I would think. Um, in the first team, that I don't think there was many. There wasn't, no. Nah, there wasn't. Just, it was just the team. young boys. The young boys, like your Carl's, that we've seen it before. Carl, Kyle, Kyle Hutton, Carl Naismith, Coley. They see were fucking bonkers, but they ended up getting put out the door because of the way they were. That's ultimately what it what it came down to. Um, but I don't know. I think I think it was difficult to be daft at Rangers at that time because of like as Alon McCoy he says the first thing about McCoy's being a nice and a, a lovely guy and stuff, he still had what his Rangers to be professional. Yeah. Mm. So there wasn't as many characters that he brought in where, I mean, Kenny Medell was probably one of the, him and Durante, they were characters. Oh, they, were, they were bonkers. I yeah. them too. I they too were like, they were too, and I thought I sometimes always feel that when you're a young guy going into Rangers or a young going into Rangers, you don't know what to do because it's such a big club. You're scared in case you you do make it up, muck it up. Mm -hmm. That's how I would have felt, and probably you would have felt the same. Yep. Going in there Aye. as your boyhood club, you're going there. You don't you don't want to ruin an opportunity you've probably dreamed about your whole life. Yeah, but, um, but no, I've just I don't. I, in my time, there wasn't that many like crazy people in the yeah. room, and I don't think even the, obviously Moshney, the Motherwell game. Yeah, what he's done, what he's done. What happened afterwards in the change room? That's what I want to know oh. because no bad. I have not. Think? Um, I, I, I am the man to tell you um, no listen the game didn't go the way we wanted it to go certainly for me personally as well it was a it was a difficult game um, made a huge error that very high profile at that time I say you have these games that the best game of your life at high profile time and then you, you, you feel the other side of it where you have probably the worst right, mistake we don't need it because you just get the point <laughs> <laughs> worst mistake of your career in that game so um, yeah I think the emotions were high frustration was there it was a difficult season there was a lot of going on Coyce had left Kenny McDowell stepped in didn't want to be there openly said it in his first Did he? Yeah, he openly Did Kenny sacked? Um, Garden and Leave aye, Garden and Leave got put in Garden and Leave and Coyce and Kenny were absolutely tight they'd worked together for years and, and Kenny knew that Coyce had been thrown under the bus a bit Did he? Um, and, and Kenny had came in and says look lads I've been put in this position but I don't want to be here and that's hard as a player especially when you've got that expectation of winning every single game for the for the fans you've got um, people who are who are kind of so dejected with what's going on at the club at that time. Um, so yeah, it was it was a difficult season. I think the frustration had just built up. Obviously, the instant after the game with Lee Irwin, and obviously I've got to know Lee because I, I spent the changing room well as well. So I know what kind of character he is. He's a bit of a wind up, but he's a good lad. Mm -hmm. And then Moshney's obviously um, got in tow with him. I think there was a, a handshake or something that happened. Then it just ended up a full on scrap and it was uh, it was absolutely bonkers because I just remember walking down thinking get me in the changing room like this is you just want to get off the pitch when you've had one of them games do you know what I mean and, and you want to try and reflect on your own thoughts and then you see all this kicking off and I'm like wow so you try to get involved to help get teammates in and that 
went to the changing room and washed and he's going absolutely mental. Was like, he? I mean, smashed the, punched the mirror, smashed the mirror, blood everywhere, all in his hands. He's, he's just lost it. And he's like, everyone was like, calm down. But he's speaking in a calm manner. So he's not like ranting, raving, shouting. And he's going like, no, Cammy, I'm, I'm gone. I need to, I need to go, I need to go and finish this. And he, and he was just like, calm, wanting to go and finish the job, basically. <laughs> just wanting to go and have a square go well. Um, so it, well, eventually, a number because he's a big big lad and all mm -hmm. so there was about five of us like holding him back keeping the door closed trying to de-escalate the situation eventually he kind of calmed down um, but then we got on the bus and he, he was calm and then all of a sudden we're standing on the bus talking and you just see the big man sauntering off the bus no, none of us even thought in or not. Next minute, he's over Lee Irwin's face again. He'd seen Lee Irwin coming out of the stadium. Just went went for him again. <laughs> but he didn't make a meal. He didn't go, lads, I'm going to get this. Ah, lad. I just, just walked over and went for him again. Incredible. Um, and then that was him. I always remember him saying, lads, you'll never you'll never see me again. Um, he was driving to France and that, that was night. <laughs> he was driving to France and he was away. And that was him. Finished. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting my car and I'm going to France. Okay, cheers, Master. How was the dressing room? Apart from obviously that, how was the dressing room as a whole after that game? Uh, Did anybody speak? Or? No, so it was it was quite weird. The dressing room was so um, frantic because of what had happened That's on the pitch. Bad. Everyone was going mental. We we kind of got ourselves calmed down, showered on the bus, and we went back to Ibrox. And then we sat in the changing room, and um, Stuart McCall just kind of said that obviously we'd fell short. Um, he spoke about that the first game had hurt us badly going down um, to Motherwell with, with such a, a deficit to come over. And then we didn't, I would say in the Motherwell game, listen, people still hammer me from a mistake, but, uh, but we didn't perform well enough. No. The first half, even remember, they had a number of opportunities to score and we didn't, we, we just ran out of steam. I think that's what happened. Everything had got too much for us. We put so much into the Hibs game before it. Yeah. Um, and and that had drained us, and then we just run out of, run out of legs. Um, uh, and unfortunately, obviously, we we didn't have enough to get over the line. So, but he he just says, look, lads, I don't know what's going to happen because nobody knew the future there because obviously Stuart had came in for a short period of time. Um, he didn't know his future. Not a lot of players didn't know their future. So it was a it's a bizarre environment. That, that was a really that. big big mess that summer. Um, so I, I think I went on holiday a couple of days. Oh no, I got married five days later actually, and. It was it was a tough week mentally for me, um, really really tough. Probably the hardest week in my career, um, trying to deal with the, everything that had happened. You've obviously got social media and you're getting hammered, and it was my kind of first experience of a really bad, like aye. vibe coming aye. towards you. Aye, because as um, a goalie, you you, you you very rarely get that as a goalie. Yeah, because predominantly you're the guy that's made enough saves yep. over the course of a season aye. to keep your team in certain games, whereas. When you're in a high profile game like that was yeah. against Motherwell and you've made a mistake, they're looking for blame. Aye. Yeah, they're, they're all frustrated and I get it. Listen, I was I was the most frustrated person. I didn't want to do that. Um but I had to deal with that. Um, it'd been a hard season for me as well. I had a dislocated shoulder, I had surgery on that. So I rushed myself back to get these games. I Aye. wanted to play these games. I was back just at the tail end of the season. I then had done my knee during this. So I'd rushed myself back, done my knee in training, started taking injections to play. And I was taking injections every single game on my knee. And I was done at the end of the season. My head had gone, obviously a mistake. I was getting married. Got married. Anyways, I went on holiday. And it just got worse because a, a, a few days into my holiday, I thought, you know, we're back soon. So I need to go a run, which, as you know, I don't run very well. But <laughs> but I said, I need to go a run. So I tried to run. My knee just felt like it was going to give way. So I phoned the physio and that was it. Um, needed surgery on my knee again. Did you? Aye. Well, is it at this point, have you got a year left at Rangers? Uh, I had... Two years left. Two, year left. two years left at Rangers. So I'd, I had to. I phoned the physio, and at first he was like, "Look, enjoy your holiday. Just try and don't do anything. Just try and get your head refreshed and back." So, but I was frustrated. I wanted to try and get going again, getting ready for the next season. I couldn't do anything. I just um, went and seen him as soon as I got back. We assessed it, got a scan, and I had torn my articular cartilage in my knee, and um, I needed a microfracture in my knee, and the microfracture was six months. So that was it. It was devastating. New manager comes in, Matt Warburton. I'm automatically injured straight away. Needed to go for surgery. Uh, it was just uh, it was. How a, did you find him, Warburton, when he first came in? He was good. He was good. Um, listen, 
Matt Warburton, I would say, I, I've I've done some pad press on Matt Warburton, right? Have you? Previously, yeah. I so again, I think when when I left the club, I kind of gave him a bit of stick for not, and again, it was for for not being honest. Right. Um, and and I think probably when we go into this chat, you'll find managers that I like are, are man managers that can yep. be honest with you and be straight. Sometimes you don't get told the things you want to be told, but I'm I'm okay with that. Um, best get, best manager I've had on a training pitch though his, his training was, was phenomenal phenomenal he played really good football but worked so hard and it he was so organized like, you could see he came from a business background because he, we had a sketch the first time in my career we had a monthly schedule up on the wall it would never change and on the monthly schedule say for example it would say Monday level 1 training it would say 65 minutes and then it would say gym 30 minutes whatever and it would have timing so everything would be scheduled you'd have your days off he said it would never change unless TV changed the games oh, um, and his training was see if it was a, a 55 minute training session but it was a level 4 it would be so intense from start to finish he'd hit his numbers he wanted to hit and you'd be off the training pitch on 55 minutes there was no see some managers that go right. oh, we're only doing another day an hour and a half later you're still on the training That's pitch shame, absolutely yeah. not he was, he was literally see if you were doing a drill he'd stop it and just go right lads we're in he, he knew his numbers he needed to hit oh, he'd calculated right. it all out with his distances and stuff, he was really, really good, very well organised. Him and Davy Weir were really good, but I just, I had, I, I'd fell out one because um, I wanted to go on loan. I got the opportunity to go on loan to Aberdeen. Aberdeen had, had phoned me and, and said the their goal at the time had went back to Liverpool. What was the boy's name? Uh, oh, Danny, no. Ward. Right. Danny Ward. So Danny, Danny Ward had done brilliant um, that season. They'd got recalled. They were looking for a goalie to fill the gap. And I was I was back fit by this time and I was second fiddle to Wes and Wes was doing brilliant. Um, so God Marshall had spoke to me and says, you fit, you're available. I says, aye. I says, I want to go on loan. I've not spoke to the manager about it yet, but I want to go on loan. So I said um, to my agent to phone the manager. He'd phoned the manager and, he said, and my agent was like, oh, it's, a, it's a basically a done deal. I was like, perfect. He says, get yourself ready. You're going to Aberdeen for the next six months to end the season. I was like, right, perfect. Um, told my missus and that and then next day I went see my, I hadn't heard anything so I knocked on Matt Warren's door and I was like look what, what's the script to Aberdeen I like, don't want you and I was like they don't want me I says they do want me no they don't want you, you you've got to stay here what? and then that was it it was just so bizarre why did you say that I don't know because we'd signed a big Polish goalie at the time and he was a big massive unit like 6 foot 8 big had the had all the attributes that I wanted as a goalie <laughs> uh, but then he wasn't the best and right. I think they thought he was going to be better than he was and then he right. came in and I, I don't know if Matt Warburton then thought do you know what I need to keep Cam in case Wes gets injured because I can't trust this guy um, but if he'd just been honest with just me in that, that way and he, he literally said Aberdeen are in the interest and I was like wow hold on a minute I've actually spoke to Aberdeen or the and goalie he, coach you know you didn't say that no I couldn't know. and it was so frustrating at the time and I was just I just thought he, he struggled a little bit. See when you knocked on his door, it was one of them ones that Mark and and as I say, he was brilliant on the training pitch. Had some really good things about, him, but I think one to one um, and man in management, he, he struggled a little bit with the, the older players. Um, right. He, he was one of them ones when when you're speaking to somebody, he didn't really like to make eye contact. Right. Um, and and I felt as if he just wanted me out of the room as soon as I came in. He was just kind of wanting you. I tell him something to just get him out of the room, sort of thing, mm. um, which was frustrating because, as I say, I, I love guys that just tell you it straight. See, if you're no for everyone. I, I get that as a player. I'm no for everyone as a goalkeeper or when I play. That, but just, just be honest about it. Really nice. I know. It, so have you seen that bit in the press? I, I see. I, is, I, it, is, it, is it came back to you? Is it, I, no, a few. I had a few phone calls uh, from a couple of his staff members that weren't Did happy. I. But listen, that's fine because I've got my, my own opinion and I was only honest in it. Um, and that that was it. At the end of the day, um, as I said, for me, the best guy on the training pitch. I thought he was for, his training was brilliant, so intense, really, really good. Was uh, David Weir? Was he good? Brilliant. Aye. David, Did he do a lot of the coaching, or was he sort of? I know David was quite involved, but Matt was really involved in the coaching. Was right on it, and and always. He, he would do a lot of possession drills, right? Because obviously we were passing the ball, popping the ball about. But he'd do loads of them, and then come in and have a wee chat and what can we do better? And it was all about that. And but he was aye. Davy was Davy was good as well. I knew Davy from obviously Scotland squads and stuff oh, as well. He was I. in the squads, so but he was he was really good, very intelligent guy. Tavernier you signed that year? Yeah. Can you believe the legend he's became now? Ah, uh, incredible. Um, Did you see that happening? No, I always remember the first day that him and Waggy came in um, to the. The dinner hall, we were sitting there, we were, we were having dinner and then um, these two lads came in and sat down and it was Tav and Waggy and 
um, well, with their agent at the time and um, just young, young boys. And um, yeah, when you started to see him on a training pitch, like an absolutely talented player, um, I think it took him a bit of time to find his feet. Uh, I always remember having conversations with him about because I, I don't think he understood how big Rangers was at the start, which mm-hmm. you wouldn't if you're not from up here. Um, and just try to uh, explain to him and yeah, I think he's he's done he's a great, great guy, really good guy. I really liked him. Um, very down to earth, works incredibly hard. Like he used to always again, I was number two at that point. Cammy, can you stay out for free kicks? Can you stay out for penalties? No problem. And he would tell me his penalties as well. He was that. He would always tell me where he was going. So we'd so do some I penalties. Can, we'd do some right. penalties, try and save them, and then he'd be saying, Right, Cammy, I'm gonna whip into that corner. Just go as you naturally would, but you know it's going to go there. Yeah. And just just because he wanted to be so precise that precise. if a goalie did go there, it still it's goes in. Enough to get in. Still did goes you see in. him being a captain though? Like, was he vocal? Was he a leader? Um, I, I, I wouldn't say he was that vocal at the time, but he was growing into a role at Rangers. I could see him growing with the club. Um, and I, I, I listen. I think he's. I think he's. He's a very good captain. I think he. You look at moments last season, and um, he scores it. Big Aye, moments, big he, moments he, and see if you've got a captain that's doing that and dragging your team through it. I think it's a great quality to have, and as I say, I think he's well respected within the changing room. Um, captains are different from probably when when us guys played the, the vocal guy who's shouting nuts. and screaming. Um, it's Cal McGregor as well. Very just performs yeah. really well and and it leads by example. And I think Tav does that as well. Was Andy there? Andy Hardy? Andy was there, aye. How Andy, was he? Andy was good. Aye, he's a great lad. I liked Andy, to be fair. Was he, I, I've heard he's quite fucking mouthy, Andy. Quite aye, vocal. quite no, chirpy, mouthy, sorry, but No, he was, he was quite chirpy. Quite grumpy sometimes. Aye, aye. Just, that, aye. Grumpy. <laughs> if it didn't go his way, we'd uh, kind of get spit the dummy out a wee bit. Aye, a wee bit. When in training? Aye. 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 I love that for him, That's good, though. Who, who, who was your other big names in that team? That I'm forgetting well, you? You had, like, obviously... Uh, Tav, Waggy, you had sort of Danny Wilson was um, centre half. Um, so I think we Barry Mackay hit. That's what where he kind of hit the ground running, uh, and it was it was amazing. They went from Barry. I remember going on a pre-season tour with Rangers in America. Absolutely confidence destroyed. This was under um, Coisty. Just couldn't perform. Just didn't suit his style of play the way we were playing at the time to Mark Warburton taking him under his wing and just playing. He, he used to play this front three, and he said to Baz, and I, I think it was. Harry Forrester was on one side and Baz was on the other, and it was just like you don't need to come back. Just stand when we're when we're defending. I want you to use the outlets right, right on the halfway line. Stand as wide as you can, um, and he was brilliant. But was, sorry, was there a? Did you f- find that there was a big difference between Wilbert and McCoyst? Just different styles of play, I and I think you could you obviously you could tell it on the pitch, but uh, during the training sessions as well, Matt Warburton was totally possession based. His his strategy of, of winning a game of football was mm-hmm. all about having the ball and being possession based and we worked on that every single day that week. Patterns of play, possessions, small possessions so that everyone was comfortable with the ball uh-huh. with somebody close to them. Um so it, you can totally tell why he was successful with How do you look back at your time at Rangers as a whole? Oh, listen, I absolutely loved it. And I, 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 there's nothing that I regret. Um, obviously, you would love to change some things, but it just doesn't happen. That's that's football. You have highs, you have lows. Loved every minute of playing for a club that I supported. Um, and yeah, it was it was probably the biggest regret was the injuries that I got. My shoulder was the wrong time. Um, hard, I'd done my shoulder and then I rushed back my shoulder to get them final sort of games of the season because we were going to go into that playoffs. And I, I, as I say, I don't blame anyone. I put myself in that position because I wanted to play for the club. I took injections in my knee when I'd done my knee at that point as well. So everything just kind of fell at the wrong time. Um, but you put yourself in that position to try and do well for the club and unfortunately it didn't Do you still happen. go back to Ibrox? Yeah, I've been back a few times. How's the fans with you now? Do do they... I know, listen, the fans are fine. Good, they're, good. They're, they're fine, but I think they know, obviously... You're part of a you're part of a process. I kind of always knew that you were always going to be part of a process if yeah. you, if you get me. Aye, um, aye. There's certain stages of the process aye, that you needed to go through. Everybody likes you. Know everybody will remember you. But ultimately, you're there at the beginning of something that has got them back to where they are. Something that had to happen. Aye, something yeah. that had to happen. They got themselves down there, and it, the only way was to to go through this process, no matter how painful it was, and it was very painful at times for the fans and for the club as a whole but they eventually got back to where they are and hopefully they can they can kick on this season Brilliant and then what appealed you to go to Dundee United was that in the Championship? Yeah so they'd just got relegated right. um, the season before 
Ray McKenna had just got the job and he'd spoke to my agent and I went and met him and it was it was more probably about him the, the reason that I wanted to go to the club obviously they were a big big club mm-hmm. um, he was guaranteed me a play and I hadn't played the season before and I just wanted to play football because I had a year left at Rangers decided that I was moving on um, and yeah it was I, I, he was an example of a manager that just was straight with you a man manager that would tell you how it is and how it was going to be and put his trust into me as a, as a goalkeeper as well and I loved my time at United, I absolutely loved it. The problem was I was living in Annan and I was driving from Annan to St Andrews purely because I had a young family at the time right. and I wasn't willing. And I'd say to How Ray long at the time, is that? That's oh, about a three hour job, surely. Oh, it's about three, three and a bit hours oh. every day there and back. What time did you sit off at six in the morning? I was about just back at six. Oh, and if you're doing God. a double session. You could have stayed with me for a bit if you wanted. Taking on every half, play that time. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, I spoke today and I says, look, I'm, I'm no, I, I can't at this moment commit to, to moving up because I've got a young family, I want to be around my family and stuff. And he was fine with it. He's like, look, if you think you can travel, travel. Not a problem with it. As long as you're performing, he was absolutely cool with it. Um, and that was the only reason I left United. Um, absolutely loved my time. He made me captain. It was the first time in my career I'd ever been captain. Oh, wait. And I loved it. So I, loved, feeling that, I it? loved the responsibility. I just loved them. Um, some feeling I, I, I swear I had it. What were you, the captain of the Boca? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no captain of the ship with that she shot on. <laughs> she shot. <laughs> she shot. She <laughs> shot. <laughs> oh, do you know what I was the captain? Once genuinely in, in my career at Celtic Reserves, and it was. Are you high? Well, listen to this one. The reserves, well, I think the reserves were away. And I, I don't know why I wasn't away. So I was, it was a reserve game booked, but the reserves were away. The under 19s were away. So it was under 17s that came up to the reserve, so I was the only reserve player, so I had to give me a default almost. <laughs> you actually me, I mean, I was brought as a captain. Ah, Did you do you're, a speech? You're, you're good. No, I don't really speak, but I was just shouting in that in the pitch. Were you? <laughs> Did you get the kit man to put your captain's arm man on? Just hold your arm <laughs> in front of everybody. <laughs> Who, just hold that quickly, I'm going to make this right. Okay, I need a quick answer. Best captain you've played with? Should be uh, quick fire. Oh. Gary Green. No, I, I got, no, Kevin Ball. The guy with the white boots, my dad bought him at Woolworths, one pound. Who? Kevin, no, was it Kevin Ball? No. He bought him for Woolworths, not Alan Ball. Alan oh, Ball, that's uh, the right. England player, aye. No, aye. Kevin Ball. My dad bought a pound per boot for Woolworths. Uh, Pascali, I liked was him. Was it mine? I liked him. He was just dead infectious and, and really bubbly, especially when you're down. Do you know what I mean? You'd get the boys going again pretty quickly. Who's the captain aye. at Rangers, sorry? Lee Jig. McCulloch, aye. You know, like him? No, Jig was plastic <laughs> all. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Jack. <laughs> right, uh, uh, characters in the Dundee United squad, we obviously know a hero who was only here and had a shocker on here, Lewis Tosney. <laughs> oh, what a boy. How was he at Dundee United? Did he get his feet out when he was here? No, but he was just constantly talking about shiting. And oh, that's day. what he does. He's, he's uh, obsessed with, like, shiting and... That was the most what? edit. It was the most edit we've ever had. All he spoke was about, he every, every story was somebody shiting somebody. <laughs> He's, he's some man he's, he's a great boy a, isn't he? oh brilliant love him a bit um, shared a couple of because he was at Kelly as a, a, a kid so he was so on that loan season, uh, we won the cup he came on loan but he couldn't play because he was on loan from Selly then Dundee United and then Falkirk um, I shared the changing room with him so great great lad still keep in touch with him great but boy. his feet were absolutely he had feet like an 80 year old woman like you know red and cracked and how like, do you know curled about up toes and that how have you seen an eight-year-old woman's feet? That's what I want to know. <laughs> like my granny's feet, aye, do you know what I mean? You're g- <laughs> I've not been licking any feet, no. Who is this? But honestly, they were horrendous. Nice no, feet oh. are honking. Mm. What about uh, Will of Flood? Was he there? Aye, we fired. See Money? Aye, I oh, heard that. Loved it. And I always remember, he, I, was, I think I'd left the season before, but I remember his rant in the telly. I think it was a playoff games and he Absolutely. got sent off and he was like, ah, so and so and the, the, aye. Is he not a wee successful, like, football agent or something? Aye, well, he's doing well, A wee successful aye. football agent? Aye, he was a wee. Would, <laughs> you, would you, see, but that, but I, I, mate, honestly, that's my pet hate in football players that moaned at you. Because I always say to them, I never meant to get, it's not as if I went, I want to pass the ball to somebody else. <laughs> so, <laughs> I would moan at somebody for being lazy, but see, when you didn't pass to somebody, I hated somebody that moaned at you. Like, I actually lost the plot with it. How did you feel with it? Like his goalies are all nuts, aren't they? No, I, listen, I, I tried to moan in a, 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 do you know what I mean, a respectful way. You get guys that moan that are just so disrespectful. That's the thing that pisses ah, you off. That's horrible. When they speak to you like a bit of shite. Um, <laughs> do you know what I mean? But Willow, no, Willow would just go off on a tangent. He would just, he'd lose his head. Ah, that yeah. was his, he'd like sort of small man syndrome, just going nuts. And um, But uh, he, was, he was a good lad, actually, a really good player. For Any other big characters in there? Hey, I'm trying to think who else. Or the best what, players? Simon Murray. 
We oh, say, aye. Aye, say was signed by Ross Some boy, man, honestly. See, a bit of a spaceman. No, not bad, but a oh, good spaceman. He was, well, he was a, he was a plumber before. Can he be a good spaceman? <laughs> good spaceman. <laughs> he was a plumber before he came in. Uh, I think he came in the season before me, but he's been and uh, he, yeah, he, I think he, he ended up having to fix all the fucking toilets and oh. that. Aye, 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 at the St Andrews training ground. He came in with his tool bag and that. <laughs> Just like your best news. He was saying him, though, wasn't he? Aye. He's saying him, he's saying him. He's saying him, he's tool bag and... Um, and, and he's... Um, so actually, any other ones? I thought, don't know if you're going to say something. I don't no, want to cut don't, you off. No, I don't. I, no, I need those. No, no, I can pop no. some of my mind straight away. Um, He's missed player. He missed promotion that year, didn't he? So again, fine margins in football. We got to the playoff final, finished third in the league, I think, a third or fourth. So we played Morton in the first one, beat them over the two legs, beat Falkirk over the two legs, played Hamilton. So we're going into the game feeling fairly Don't confident. See. But Tanadice, first game, Simon Murray goes down for a penalty about 65, 70 minutes in the game. Steve McLean, second yellow card, sends him off. It was a penalty. See, in the replays you watch it back, it was a penalty. If we'd got that penalty, we would have won that tie because we would have took that lead. Horrible there, that, huh? and, and he got sent off. So that game ended up nil-nil because we couldn't. We ended up having to sit back last 20 just to make sure we didn't concede. Um, and then we went to Hamilton and we lost the game 1-0. Uh, Greg Dockett scored a goal. Um, and we just kind of run out of steam. But I think if we had went with the lead into that game, the we'd have won, we'd have had that wee bit more about us. And it's so fine margins that people forget about that as well. And it's like, it frustrates me because we were so close just to bouncing straight back up. Brilliant, mate. And then it was a strange one. You, you returned to Kilmarnock, but you didn't make an appearance. Is that right? Aye. So, what was that about? No, was a good move. <laughs> <laughs> Best move in my career. Uh, Jig signed me. So Jig was manager. Oh, no, that's why yeah, you don't like each other. Aye, just a like No, so <laughs> Jig was... Now I can put the pieces together. Yeah. No, Aye. so Jig signed me and then six weeks later he got sacked. So... Oh, did he? Jig did did he? Did that Italian boy come in? No, Steve Clark Steve came Clark, in. Steve so Clark, so did die. Um, How did he didn't like you either then. Did you get on the clocky? Amazing. Uh, and it's bizarre. So this is, again, why, why I think like man managers, and I like man managers, um, Jig got sacked and then he pulled everyone in when he first came in and he had a chat and he's like, why have you? Why, why did you come here? You played 53 games for Dundee United the season before. What I said, look, family reason, I wanted to close it home. I thought this was going to work out for me. It didn't work out. Jamie McDonald was doing well at the time as well. Um, so I just struggled to get in the team and he's like, right, okay, he says, um, just keep working hard, blah, blah, blah. Hopefully we'll give you an opportunity. Even if it's a cup games, we'll get you in. So um, January was coming about and I went in and seen Steve and I says, look, this hasn't worked out. I need to get away. Yeah. I'm getting frustrated. it be my old club, do you know what I mean? I hadn't what I felt really shite because you'd went back to a club you, <laughs> you loved and you'd done well and then it just didn't happen for you. Nearly um, forgot about you, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> Taking your pictures off the wall. <laughs> uh, that metal back. So uh, he says, "Look, I've nobody in in place. So I, I need two good goalies between now and the end of the season. I had another year left as well." And he says, "Look, we'll we'll reassess at the end of the season." So he kind of talked me wrong. He says, "You'll play a cup games. We'll treat you like really well and make sure you're fit and stuff." And I was like, "Right, fine, perfect." He's been honest with me. He wants me here because he wants two good goalies. Thirty first of January comes. Um, <laughs> Alex Dyer goes, come, um, I finished training. Alex Dyer goes, Cammy Gaffer wants to see you in his office. So I went up to his office and says, Cammy, I'm going to let you go if you want to go. And I was like, What? And he says, Oh, we've got somebody that can come in if you want to go. So he left it still in, in, in my eye. Right? And I said, Look, do you know what? I'm going to go. And I had nothing prepared. And literally always remember that I just went over to the office, signed my, my release papers with the secretary. Got in my car, I hadn't even spoke to my agent. I just decided that it was right for me to move on. I wanted to try something. I was frustrated. I wasn't playing. Um, sat in my car and I thought, fuck, I've not got a job. I need to get myself sorted. And I was at the age, I was like 31. And I thought, you know, I need to get somewhere to train. Because if I stop, I, I felt right. as if I, I might not ah, yeah, start yeah, again. Yeah. Um, so I text Alan Combe, who was the head school coach at the time. And I says, look, Comer, I've just been released by Kelly. I've signed my papers off. Can I come and train with you um, next week? I was like, it was a Wednesday. I thought, I'll give myself a few days off. I'll train with you next week. Mm. Um, and he, then I phoned my agent. I says, look, I've just been released. And he was like, what? what's happened? I told him. So he was like, look, don't worry. We'll find you a club. We'll get you in somewhere. Um, just get yourself down the road. He's, um, phoned hey, who's your agent? He sounds a good one. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you know what you're doing? Get you some of it. <laughs> uh, so then by the time I'd got off the phone to my agent, I had a text off Alan Combs saying, uh, you're released, question mark. Um, uh, what's your plans now? And then I was like, uh, and then he says, I'll phone you in 10 minutes. So I'm sitting in the car and I'm 
phoned the missus and said, well, I've not got a job anymore. <laughs> she was delighted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then Coma phoned me and he's like, definitely, all done. I says, listen, I've, papers have been signed, I'm away, I'm, I'm done free agent. Fancy Hibs? I was like, eh. He says, oh, Scott Bain's going to sell it today. Tonight, he says, Scott Bain's going to go to sell it. We've got a game tonight against Motherwell. He says, spoke to Lenny, told him you're a free agent, Lenny wants to sign you. Wow. Um, I was like, right. And he says, can you come over to the training ground and do a medical or uh, So literally drove from Kelly Stadium, where we were training at, all the way to um, Edinburgh, done a medical. They were playing Motherwell at night, so I passed the medical, sat in this, which was a miracle. Um, <laughs> <laughs> paid the physio a few quid uh, and uh, sat and watched the game and then we had, we had to wait so it was all relying on it was the it was like Scott Bain and Scott Allen coming remember that one aye, aye. it was the sort of triangle that yep. was all going on um, so I had to wait and Scott Bain signing with Selic Scott Allen was coming for, I think he was on loan at Dundee from Selic at the time um, but then he was coming to uh, Hibs uh, so then I signed when that, that went through stayed up that night and trained with Hibs the next day wow, that was it so it was go. But it's all just oh, timing. It's mad, aye, aye, how, that's how, how did you find Lenny? Brilliant. Loved him. Did loved you? Him. Aye, I loved him. He was, he was a, an incredible character. Yeah. Um, but I remember the first conversation he came in, he knew I was going to be travelling. He says, Look, you're, you're 31 year old. If you need a day off, just come and tell me. Um, oh, yeah. We've got a family. Um, we, we know we can. Marciano was a goalie, so I was, knew I was going on as number two. Yeah. But he says, Look, I can absolutely rely on you. He says, I loved you as a goalie when you beat huh? us against Brilliant. Celtic and all that, because he was a manager in the final and stuff. And um, yeah, it's just really good man manager, um, but absolutely bonkers. Like, men. Was there any off. scary, any scary to uh, half? Uh, we, well, we'd, we were done brilliant that season. We had an unbelievable team. Um, I managed to get a, a few games because Marciano got injured, so it was great. Um, Scott Allen, John McGinn, McGeoch, um, with Camberry up front, um, Jamie McLaren, team. brilliant team. Dan McGregor, Hanlon at the back, Marciano and Goal, really, really good team. Um, and we're pushing for, I think we're pushing for second that season. Um, Rangers right to the wire. Yeah, brilliant. And uh, I always remember, but I always remember the the. Derby game, it was the first Derby game I'd been involved in, and it was all the remember the um natural order aye. that was um Levine oh, was kept aye, on going on about. So that week in training, we had been horrendous in training, honestly. Lenny's going absolutely bonkers. I mean, like cracking up every two minutes, like, yeah, you stopping it, fucking use you just get inside, get in the gym, you're fucking no damn what I'm telling you today, just losing the plot every single day. Um, and we were shite that week as well it was bizarre um, but it was a big game for us because we needed to win it to kind of keep a push for second um, so anyway it was a night time game and normally like you get you get changed like an hour and a half Lenny would come in before and read out his team and then boys would get changed so it's like an hour and 20 minutes and everyone's like sitting there going what the fuck is he like what, what's happening an hour and 15 minute coming folk are starting to get you because they're thinking fuck I need to get it's changed I want to get more work done in that and I've got routines and stuff Couple of minutes later, door bursts open. Lenny Tiller and I'm going for a shower. <laughs> so he, he, he just blanked every single player, walked into the shower, and we are just like, as soon as nobody laughed when he walked into the shower, like when he seen us. But he, as soon as he got in the shower, he fucking out and burst it laughing like he's lost the plot. He's lost the plot. And so as the shower five minutes comes back in, he, so it's about an hour and five minutes to the game, and he comes in, fucking still soaking wet, <laughs> clays on there, and he's like, flips the chair over. Right, there's a team. Better win this game tonight. Um, so that was it. And boys are like, wow, he's gone. Like, this guy is absolutely gone. Wow. Um, we win the game. And then it was bizarre because I said to Grant Murray, the co one of the coaches at the time, I says, did he mean, like, did he mean to do that? Because it made everyone really relaxed and laugh. Do you know what I mean? We were ah, very tense. Right. We were very tense. I've never seen the team like it because we had such a good team. We were very tense and... Um, everyone was a bit apprehensive about what was going to happen that night and how big a game it was and all of a sudden he just took the pressure off and I don't still to this day Grant Murray said I don't know I genuinely don't that's know that's genius and, and it, it probably was genius eh? and I, I think it was like I think he he, he thinks he that it. yeah he thinks right. that deep and he he'd, as I say because he'd been going nuts all, all week in training it had been that bad mm -hmm. and he looked he was saying that we looked nervous that's what he was saying all week I and might know what he's going to shower for brilliant and and because we won the game it was just class but he's honestly a brilliant manager he, he went on to as well where we got beat um second last game of the season hearts away and we had to win that game um and we got beat and he, he chucked all his staff out 
the, the didn't let his staff come into the change room, just went for the players. Twenty players sitting in the change room, just him on his own going mental. John McGinn was worth a million pesetas, I think. That's what his comment was to me. <laughs> <laughs> he was, uh, but he just just lost it because he was so passionate, so passionate Aye. about the club. Just wanted to, a true winner. That's what he was, an absolute winner. I, 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 that's what I feel. I feel kind of like when you hear people talking about Lennon now or whatever it's a wee bit like his times. His times up. Back, yep. It's sort of back to day that management. I don't, I don't think that at all. I think that came from a right place, and I think that. He's one guy who he did respect when he, when he did do that, when he was right. gone mental, because it was done because, as you said, it wasn't he just like this guy's coming in to be no. like a bully or anything like that. And he's the type of a manager I felt that had that honour of, see, when you did do well and he said, well, don't you? It meant the world. Aye. Did, really? you, did you feel? Did oh, you? no, 100%. He was, he was the best. I was, again, touching on a, a, a something that touched me was, I think my, my first game I was involved with the club was Rangers away. Um, and we were sitting in the, having the pre-match meal, and I'd just joined the club, so I was obviously getting, I knew a few lads of playing against them and stuff, and a couple of boys I'd maybe played with in the past, and then Lenny was doing his team talk in the hotel, and he mentioned the League Cup win for me, and he was saying to Marciano, you need to fucking perform, see that boy, he'll be chasing you for his spot, and he says, you need to, pro-. he had an unbelievable game at, at a big stage, and you need to perform that today, wow. and he was just like, I just joined the club, and do you know what I mean, it, it was like, it was quite good, I, to, I knew I was on the bench, but he just made me feel part of the brilliant. group, um, again, sort of a clever, really clever thing to do from a manager, and as I say, he was, he was a brilliant man manager, I, I think all the boys that had at that time understood him, that if you didn't work hard for him, then you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't play, and, and it was Darren McGregor, Darren McGregor only trained once a week, and because his knee was knackered, and if he trained all week, he would have been, uh, he wouldn't have been able to perform to perform. What, what he could do on a Saturday. And Lenny just says, "Look, see, as long as you're performing on a Saturday, you can train once a week. That's I'm okay with that, which is I, great." I know that's brilliant, and I see sometimes hear people say, "He needs to calm down." I, you don't want that. You want, you don't want to take that side talk, off. They all, they all, like Cam is telling us a, a positive side to nearly Lenny, whereas a lot of people just hear a negative yeah. side of him. Aye. The scream of the shout, yeah. or always a dying. He can't do what he's done. No, he managed no, Celtic so twice, and no. Everything he's done, if you like that. Uh, how would John McGinn was he incredible? A uh, terrible trainer. Was he? Oh, horrendous. Probably a man doing training, John. Oh, honestly, was he? he was horrendous. And he would openly say, oh, you're walking off the pitch. And like, I was hopeless there, wasn't I? I was like, I, hopeless. But on, in a game, he was phenomenal. And obviously, he's, he's taken it to a, a different level. But you could always see him going to a different level. Um, could you? Aye. And I was, at that stage, um, he left that summer um, when, I, when I was there. Um, and I always had conversations about when he was he was wanting to go down south he knew Celtic were obviously interested at that time and for me I've always said that Celtic have missed the boat on a, 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 an unbelievable I'm pretty sure all Celtic fans are, are looking uh, at an unbelievable sign because he was always going to be a star player for me it was like buying money it was like literally that's what I found it that uh, easy looking at it going if you buy him for two million you're just selling him on three years later you're selling him for potentially uh, ten he was always, that was always going to happen uh-huh. um, and he's, he's a great guy Works really, really hard. Um, but yeah, terrible training. I'm pretty sure he's better in training now. Was it, do you still keep in contact with him? I speak to him now and again, aye. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Aye, he's a good lad. He's a good lad. Um, oh, good for him. Aye, brilliant. Um, were you at official with Gary Caldwell? Yes. Was this when the the team thing got leaked? Do you remember that? Was it Gary Caldwell? Do you remember the... the teams the teams got leaked before that? He asked everybody to pick the team. I asked oh, everybody to pick you the involved team. I went, I went on loan. So yeah, I went to St Johnston. Um, um, I, I, I was still in the group chat. <laughs> That was not mad that mate, wasn't it? Oh yeah, it was mad. Uh, I think it I can't remember how they worked out, but they worked out who it was. Uh, and, it was uh, a network they caught the person. Uh, it was, the, wasn't it? That was network. it. It was something bizarre. Um, what was he? Was Gary Caldwell was fat that like at first was it did you enjoy that, mate? No, so I, I didn't get on with Gary Caldwell either. Did you know? Well, I've seen him. Are you I, quite? He, I, I mean, you, you seem like a, a lovely, lovely man. No. Do you come? Are you quite? <laughs> did, are you a few? No, so uh, no, I didn't fall with jig. Definitely no. Um, <laughs> Gary that. Caldwell was. <laughs> Gary Caldwell was. Um, he came into the club and um, I, I was playing at the time, and then I, I done my Achilles. I dropped out of the team, and obviously I wanted to play at that stage and. He ended up bringing Connor Hazard. Has he? Ah, came in? So I, so he came in, um, and then I basically said, "Look, can I go um, on loan?" And he says, "You can go permanently." I was like, "Right, perfect." But at that point, I never had anything to go to, um, so I was kind of looking about, and then a couple of things came up, and he's basically said no, um, which was frustrating. 
Uh, but anyways, they end up, I, I managed to get a move to St Johnston, which was better because also it was in a higher league. Mm -hmm. He was in the Premier League again. Um, so, but no, nah, he, he had different ideas. He had fresh ideas as a manager. We'd done a lot of, was a lot of team building stuff. We'd uh -huh. done, uh, listen, we were in Army the, days, it? Oh, we, we'd done that. We'd done the Army Day. We done, literally went into the Senior, hills. Senior day in the Army Day, that's, you know, when your manager your time's up, we're doing the Army that's Day. That's the last straw. That's the was, last straw. It was, uh, Helen's brought like literally it was blowing a gale, absolutely freezing. The boys are doing different things and then they ended up getting um I'm sure it was a physio and that, like the army boys put balaclavas on that and kidnapped them and, and it was oh it was mental, it was all sorts going on. Thankfully I was on I was on crutches from my Achilles, so I didn't have to do it. Kidnapped them. <laughs> It was mad, honestly. God, it was mad. Oh, <laughs> magic, man, magic. Um, and any other, any other mad? I just want it. Was it just army based? It's crazy. So was there any other? Because do you ever remember Suarez said that uh, 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 Ajax they took them out and put them in minis? That was the team building. You drove around minis the city. I know it's not. It's not a good story, but that's. Did you? No, I wasn't involved with the minis. <laughs> we did. Uh, we did one at Wills. We went to some like big fancy hotel in Chester. And did like the whole rope climbing thing. Ah, where you like. Fuck that, man, you climb up a rope. <laughs> where you climb onto like a tree, a ledge, and you hate to try and help your teammates up and see how many you can get in the ledge and support each and all of that. And I was like, well, I'm the only one fucking fitting in this ledge. The rest of you can, <laughs> the rest of you can try and get up here, but you're not getting up here because I'm not falling. I thought we had a harness on. And a fucking harness on, right? Anything else? You get up to anything else? Days like that. Paintball, and that's another one. That's fucking Aye. agony, mate. Aye. Aye. You better get shot with a real gun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nah, I try to think There wasn't really Any No, I've Nah, we've we done daft things You know like it, it, Certainly it was Under Gary Caldwell as well It was like You know, when you You put your arms across You have to get out of this circle And oh, With it Naked un <laughs> No It would have been better If it was naked <laughs> Big guys man, That's not That's so, not a surprise for aye, me. So And then mate, You moved St. John you said Falk St. Johnston and Falk How did you find that, uh, The two teams It was good St. Johnston was a loan That kind of got me away From where I was Unhappy Team building Team building Too much team building So it was good uh, Managed to get a few games As well Big Xander got injured So it was It was a good Kind of loan spell And then Falkirk was um, was good Ray McKinnon again Was the manager So that kind of Made me I was kind of Knew my career was Sliding away And um I knew would look after me, my, my body and my knee was starting to hurt me at that point. It'd been a long time since obviously a lot of my operations and stuff. So I was signed for them and enjoyed Falkirk to be fair. I think again it's probably one I look back and I think they pressed the button a little bit too quick on Ray, I got rid of him and then mm -hmm. um Lee Miller and Cracks came in. Um didn't really work out and COVID obviously hit, Aye. so it was a difficult period, yeah. So um how do you look back at your whole career, mate? Ah, listen, I loved it. It was um there's ups and downs, which there always is. Um but uh, no, I absolutely loved every single moment. The highs are probably one thing I actually regret a little bit is see winning stuff like winning right. obviously the league cup and I won a few, well, I won league one and championship and, and a couple of challenge cups. You don't actually make the most of it at the time. You think there's more and more going to come, and then I, it, 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 I always say that to players and always says when you win something, really enjoy it. Rip the arse of it, do you? Rip because you, yeah, you Jack but, Grealish. Hi, that totally. Nah, but he's, he's amazing. Like that, nah, that's what you should be should doing. Be doing. Um, but again, at the time, you always, always thought, ah, oh, there'll be another one round the corner, and there isn't. There's no. It's, it's difficult. So I always kind of regret a little bit of not celebrating, embracing them special moments a little bit better. You've been, he's been incredible. It's been really and what's good your, insight. What's your plans for the future, mate? Just been doing a lot of media stuff, so I've seen you you're uh, good on it, mate. So I enjoy doing. Uh, I've been doing a lot. This season's kind of been my breakthrough season with the BBC and doing. Uh, this morning you were on it. Loose women. There's a slot in there's there for me, is it not? There's a room you're taking over for a certain the small one guest. I would you love to. Me and Holly would look quite nice together. Aye. Aye. Look at you laughing. Oh, I'm done, oh my way. Yeah. So that's it. Just yeah, media so, look at no, media. Listen, I, I, I've. Um, I enjoy doing the uh, business stuff as well. I've, I've kind of done property business for oh, since right. I've been uh, at Rangers. I actually, kind of started that, um, and then we just started a new, which I mentioned at the start of the show, Glamping Pod site, oh, um, which uh, you, has mate. been great. So I enjoy that side of stuff. I would love to get back involved in the game in a business sense. To be honest, um, kind of 
top end of the game, oh, a director sort of goodness. side of stuff. So that would always be, yeah, I would, I, I just enjoy the, the, the financial and business side of Good, football clubs. So that would be. Well, like the idea of that of somebody being involved with football, because that now, not everybody, just because you played football, should just get a role like that. But yep. if you've got that mind, it also what business like. There's been a couple in the past, obviously, Andy Barron has done it at Kilty Hearts, yep. and then the boy um, Ian Maxwell did it at yep. Partick Thistle, who's now the chairman of the SFA. So. There is a, there is a, obviously you see things different because you've been in, you've been there at the bottom, yep. part of the football ladder, and then you're working your way through. So, listen, very good interview. Just That's before, the longest one ever, and I've got a 30 quid fine. Just you. before you go, there's a chair just getting rolled in. It's coming in. The chains are falling down. Your last meal ever before death row. What do you pick? Start on main dessert. Oh, start on, um, going to go haggis bonbons no bad a bit of whiskey sauce yeah right? no decent, bad yep. and then I might go uh, listen I'm a, um, I love a, a burger just like right. a, a real full fully loaded good. burger um, and dessert and cheesecake all the way oh, white aye. chocolate aye mm. good are you in the pod for this before in you the pod naked a, a naked with a <laughs> pint of uh, what am I having a pint of star of pramen good one of my good, good and then uh, you've got one last song to play before the chair gets firmly placed eh uh, Killers, Mr. Brightside, really happy songs. <laughs> <laughs> Getting it going for death. He's been outstanding. Cammy Bell, what a legend. Well done.